Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of The Flank. I'm joined by the one and only, the human turret, one of the best ARs to ever do it. Give it up for Sam LaRue, a.k.a. Octane. We got the multi-champion, the world champ himself. Give it up for Christopher Duarte, a.k.a. Parasite. Some of the best analysis of the game. Well, Chris, are you not a multi-champion? <laughs> no, no, I was I was expecting aches. Like that's your usual nah, intro nah, for aches. I was just you won the fucking uh what's that one with <laughs> bows in them? That fuck you won more oh, than one. True. I did I, I did win yeah, like eight, you gotta eight, start showing nine, you some something. love, Duarte. And of course we got the multi champion, the multi world champion, the legend, the icon to the Call of Duty Space, give it up for Patrick Price, aka Aches, and then of course we got the one and only the executive producer of the flank, give it up for Ben J Nassim. Gentlemen. Long day of COD today. We had three matches. We ended off with a banger. How you guys doing today? Sam, let's start with you today. How you doing, Sam? You doing all right? I'm doing great, man. I finally recovered from 24 hour. We got the best day of COD we've had since the major. Granted, we've only had a couple, but um, yeah, man. Some some absolutely fantastic call of duty to go through today. Oh, yeah. There's, uh, there's a lot to talk about today for sure. Uh, Pat, how you doing today, Pat? You doing all right? I'm good, Tom. I think I think all my predictions hit today. Um, so you know, I'm always all doing great with that. Damn, you, I think you so. went crazy. Nah, you had Vegas with us. Did I? Yeah, we all had Vegas. Oh well, Purge went neck thirty, so I didn't. Really, you know. <laughs> Spoilers, <laughs> bro. My bad. That's no. crazy. That's fucking crazy, boy. Yeah, good day, Cod. Chris, you doing all right, Chris? Yeah, man. I'm just glad we got to cap off a boring week of Cod with a great day with some good matches, some competitive matches, and some. New debuts out of some rookies. Yeah, and then of course we got the one and only the executive producer Ben J. Nassim. Ben, how you feeling today? You feeling all right? Good. We did an IRL. Well, so I got up early, watched the the Face CS series. They actually uh, took care of Miles pretty handily in uh, that best of three. And then I had a little golf stream. That was good. Good vibe. Short stay. Yeah, yeah. Blah blah blah. And I agree with Sam. We had a good day of matches, and I'm excited to go play golf tomorrow too. And we yeah. got a little bit of clubs in tonight, a little, little, little pro clubs tonight with the boys. Haven't done that in a while, so yeah. it's been a good good Sunday, good Sunday. Also, the Masters. Masters was great all week, so. It's phenomenal. That yeah. is over now. I heard Tiger Woods, is. Uh, you said he made the cut, right? Or he made the cut for the weekend? He, is, he said the record for the Masters, He made 20, he's made 24 consecutive cuts in the Masters. That's insane. insane. That's fucking there crazy. Are people, there are people in the chat who are probably younger than that span of time in which he made those cuts. Which is fucking Scotty crazy. won, right? Yeah, Scotty won. Scotty is fun right now. Someone's yeah. got to play perfect to fucking beat Scotty. He doesn't make mistakes. Yeah, doesn't Scott. doesn't make doubles. Like he's just. <clears throat> Phenomenal. I wish I, I wish I could play golf like him. Yeah, but, we're gonna yeah. get back in here. We're gonna get back into to some of these matches, man. We had three matches today. Obviously, it was, it was a long day of COD, and there's a lot to talk about. So we're gonna hop right in. Uh, and, and and let's talk about it. First series of the day, we had the Seattle Surge going up against the Carolina Royal Ravens, and we finally see a W here for the Seattle Surge. They start the stage off 1-0. They get the 3-2 victory over Carolina. You can see how they were able to do it. We'll start over uh, with you at the bottom, Pat. We'll start with you here. Seattle, they're able to take down Carolina. We'll take a look at the stat sheet. Jesus fucking mod on. It's a red carpet for Seattle Surge, and they still get the dub here, Pat. Is that Carolina or New York, Tom? Uh, that is Carolina, Pat. That oh, is okay. Carolina. Yeah, that that's Carolina. That just real similar to New York, but... Yeah, um, the kill yeah, I mean, look, I figured this, was good. this would happen. Um, I, I've said it. I'm mind-blown that Carolina did not make a roster change. I don't care how close they play teams. This team needs a change. They're not good enough to hang with anybody, and they can't even beat what was the worst team in the league um, while massively outslaying them. So um, not much surprise for me, Tom. Mm -hmm. um, I, yeah. I will say when it comes to the outslaying, Pat, I mean, I'm guessing because they they stole two searches and won both S&Ds, maybe just because of the they, they lost the respawns, that's probably I mean, where the— hard point. They did win a hard point. They won one hard point. Yeah, they did one, but they lost two respawns. So maybe that's why the, the stats are a little lopsided. Maybe. I mean, what do you guys think? Chris, what do you think about the series? Uh, I'm glad Surge was finally able to get a, you know, a win on the board. You know, it was good to see a uh, you know, rookie come in and get his first win. He didn't play particularly well. I thought he was going to like pop off in the searches, but they did get two of the searches done. I will say, though, that I think this Carolina loss, unfortunately for them, is just like new map cheese. It's like... You play two six stars, and granted, both teams had the same amount of preparation. I don't think that Seattle's um, performance on this in this series is going to be sustainable, and uh, you know Ravens just fell victim to them as uh, you know playing two 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 uh, six stars. I was going to say, Chris, search. I feel like you know that new map cheese. Like everybody's kind of on a level playing field, no? When it comes to like the new maps. Well, like yeah, but that's the thing. It's like 
teams are going to get better at that map. Like there's some teams that might figure it out quick. So like, you know, although like a team gets a win on the board now, that's like, we don't know how good they're going to be as teams adapt and learn more about the maps. Cause I'm sure that a lot of teams are going to watch the way like Seattle or any of the teams that played six star S and D played the map yeah. and they're going to try to adapt to it or steal things from them that they probably didn't do before. So I mean, I think that's just kind of unfortunate. I think Ravens uh, overall, they played great in the in the control. They steamrolled them. Um, they played pretty good on that sub base. But the S and D's is has been their heel, their Achilles heel this entire time. And they played a you know Seattle team, which I expected to be pretty decent at search with their new addition. Um, and then they also had to play a six star in there, so that's just you know it's hard whenever you're playing a new map. Yeah, for sure. Uh, ben J, we'll go to you, and then we'll go to Sam. Ben, what did you think about the series? Seattle get the dub today. I mean, listen, I think we've seen this match for what, two or I think three times, actually. And if I remember all three times, I think SCL just kind of uh, bodied them in the searches. And I think that's really kind of the problem here. If Seattle just takes one respawn, they've got a great chance to win this thing, make it a gritty five game series. I don't think the new map really had anything to do with it. I just think Carolina has a problem as an against team. And I think they have a problem with SD online. Um, and they're going to need to figure it out. Unfortunately, we talked about it, man. You 70 points. And offer every split online. You got to take advantage of those. If you're a team like Carolina, you can't let series like this slip. Um, I thought 04 played okay. I think he got kind of choke slammed in the control, but you kind of see the upside that he brings, especially in search and destroy. I think it was a key, I think, reason to kind of bring him in. So I'm excited to see the Seattle team take advantage of these smaller new maps, kind of figure out their teamwork with 04, and maybe get back in and mm, sort of. 04, he is a good combo. SD player. He's a very good search player. Yeah. I, I, I know that's about, like his, his game mode. Go ahead, Chris. I was gonna say the thing about SD is like um Seattle is like one of those teams that's very chaotic and like super over aggressive. And you can see it in that six star. Like they were just like hitting bomb sites. They like, were super running quick at them on six star. Them, right. And like listen, I like I commend them, you know, adapting to the map and like learning it quickly, but like that's not a that's not gonna be like a thing that a lot of teams are gonna be susceptible to, especially down the road. That's like the only reason I brought it up. Like obviously I think this Ravens team is still better than Seattle. Um, I just think, you know, they're you know, they're playing some new maps and you know, Seattle just ended up, you know, beating them out. I think uh Ravens will still adapt to better, you know, as this as the rest of the stage goes on. But I mean I commend I still commend Seattle for the W. Mm -hmm. Like it's good that they got one in there, but they still they still have a lot of work to do, bro. I don't think 04 is necessarily gonna move the needle. Um, because their problems were the respawn game modes and 04 is not like some respawn superstar. So they're going to need to have every single player on this team step up if they want to start like winning more series. Yeah, I, I think, Sam, uh, wait, hold on, Ben. Sam, sorry. what do you think? Uh, what did you think happened with the series today? What were your thoughts? And uh, uh, yeah, Sam, what are your thoughts? The GOAT. Um, I kind of agree with Chris in a way. I don't think that the Seattle team is worse than Carolina. I think later down the stage, I still think I'm more confident in Carolina to win, but I actually had Seattle winning the series only because of the searches. I thought both of these teams were not good enough to win in a non-extended series. So I was expecting yeah. game four, game five here. And to Ben's point, when he, uh, when he spoke, I think Seattle's just better than Carolina at S and D. Um, and with the addition of O4, four, who's just a search kid through and through. Um, so the game five Seattle win really wasn't that much of a surprise, but both these teams are fucking horrible, bro. I'm gonna be honest. These guys like, Carolina's still in need of a roster change. They're still not giving. They're losing to Seattle online, regardless. Like, yeah, it, it, I'm surprised they didn't change. To be honest with you, Sam. I, I'm going. They, to just they, have doubled, they doubled down. Yeah, they, they doubled they're, down. They're moving. They're moving, they're moving teams, together. Yeah, I'm giving teams free advice here, free of charge. I know it's early. Maybe I'm making too early of a call, but I think if you ban Six Star against Seattle, take that tiny ass map off the board and play them on a bigger map, and expose their lack of teamwork. I think they're gonna have a good chance of winning series. I know teams are going to want to get reps on six star and Vista early. They played invasion really well today. That's a big map. Uh, invasion search. They've yeah. been really good at invasion search all year, though. That's been uh, like a bread and butter for them. I think but he's I think talking about um, response. Yeah, yeah, I think he's talking about response. Okay. Remember, it, it's just in, it, well, oh, in wanna, if you're a team and you want to play Seattle, right? S and D's are going to be good. At, I think in most maps in S and D anyway, outside of Karachi, but pretty much in the respawns, you want to play them on the bigger maps. It's going to expose their lack of teamwork. And probably quality communication. Six star is so fast that guys like Kyler O4 what, are gonna what excel bigger, in situation. You mean Karachi or Invasion? Like that's it? I think the, the Rio Vista, Vista and Six Star are all I mean, they're all kinda, they're all like so medium small maps. So I, like. I mean I mean Karachi, sub base, obviously invasions out soon. We got that. We haven't seen him play Vista yet, so we'll see how Seattle do on that. But early early read, I think, on Seattle is to not play these guys on six star. I think they're gonna be 
really good. Yeah, I map. think I think Rio, even though it's a small map, is deceptively like it's a pretty rotation heavy map. So like you actually have to like hard break kills, and if you get there early enough, like you're gonna hold. And I think I don't think Caroline is a terrible Rio team. I think they've played it a couple times. They look decent at it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think I don't know. Six star is just there's. It's it's we 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 still we're still figuring out how to play it ourselves or how to like you know what it looks like on the mini map. So I can only imagine that some teams are just gonna like look good at it now. But I guarantee that like some of these weaker teams as the as the stage develops, like they're not gonna be as good as it as it as the you might think. Well, people mm. people are gonna feel out how they want to again. <clears throat> everyone wants to play six room and this. Everyone wants to get reps, but then we get to the middle of the stage and people are like, okay, here's my game plan to attack this team. Not playing them on these maps. If we end up playing Karachi, fucking three times in a series so be it like that's the thing we're gonna get to probably by week three or four mm -hmm. some of these situations yeah but let's hop in let's watch some clips from the series we do start things off on a six star heart point uh it is the new map has been a lot of fun to watch i will say guys six star has been a, a very good map i feel like we've all been enjoying watching something different um wanted to talk about the p1 break here from carolina uh, I feel like we should take a look at some of these hills. We didn't really take a look at P1 yesterday, but what do you guys think is the best way to break it? Carolina actually did a really good job here. Or sorry, the best way to hold it for Seattle because Seattle ended up getting mowed down here and getting broken. It looks like they just break right through stairs, which it just looks too easy for Carolina. Now, I, I, I know that Seattle did go on to win this map. Just want to show some mistakes that I th saw throughout the map. Uh, what do you guys think is the best way for Seattle Surge to hold this P1 when it's going from a P5 to a P1 here? Does Carolina have a trophy in in around the bottom desk, Tom? Uh, there's one. There's one in the mid hall underneath the balcony. I saw at the end of the clip right there, but it I wasn't don't one see of the There's a no, frag grenade on my boy's yeah. forehead. Yeah, yeah I don't see a trophy, nades. which could definitely be a big problem here. Gwyn does get an aid kill here, and, and he's end up he gets his nade on a boozy here, and able to find a blood. TJ finds one, and they kind of just storm through mid and work some trades, and uh, it's all over. Uh, what do you think, Sam? How would you hold if you're Seattle? Would you try and keep pressure on old if you're Seattle? I think you do. I that's think what you I, do that's where I was old. going, Sam. That's where I was going with it. Because they're kind of just pinning themselves in here. They have a they have a lack of info. Like they're not like the only info they have is like they're not hitting whatever lane that they're in, like close to the hill. I think if they had played through one of the sides of P5 and kind of gotten guaranteed info, the arrows wouldn't look as sporadic with entries and the trophy is obviously just an unfortunate attack kill for the break but yeah I, I agree just like repinching maybe like four hitting mid vent prior to this happening or just somebody like that getting pressure on p5 yeah whenever um whenever your hills are like this close together in proximity to each other on a rotation you have to forcefully play exits and like almost like you don't want like not not necessarily commit to like hitting old but like making sure that you put pressure on it and account for any of the players exiting the point because you reduce your your chances of getting like repinched through like a long route yeah, let's say when alt yeah, if Gwyn opted to take her out there, or you just like you're gonna you're gonna cut off these kills anyways. And I think the water side of the map is way more important on this hill than um having, let's say, the 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 U statue is what side. people call it. Statue, yeah, statue side. Like it's yeah, the stairs are just like a power position a lot of the time. You can pretty much cut off everyone from there. So yeah, they should have probably pressured that a little bit more and, and they might have actually had some more success. Yeah, I think pressuring old, I, I agree with you, Chris. I think when you put pressure there, it, it, you get the info from it and it kind of just eliminates a few places where they can be and it just simplifies everything. You know what I mean? Um, so good. See if Seattle can, can work on that. But then Seattle, they, they keep it pushing. We go into the next hard point. This was a P3 hill. It's actually a listen in here, and I don't know if you guys caught it. Some people were saying that fellow was stair glitching here and that I should have been throwing out a red card here. I must have missed it. So if you, we'll see if uh, we see it here during his P3 hard point. I, I believe it was when 04 was shooting him in the back when he stopped shooting. Mm -mm. I think that's what they okay. were talking about. Which is about to pop up right any second here. Hey, 04 is about to make a play. But this P3 hard point, this has been causing people problems. This is probably what one of the main hills on this map. Uh, Sam, I know you've been pretty vocal about P3 being a really easy hill to hold on this map. Yeah. Um, I mean, what do you think teams are going to have to start doing to break this hill? And we'll, we'll take a look and see if uh, Tyler Fellows... Oh, is that him or what? <laughs> Is that him right there? Stair yeah. glitching away. That's him. Correct. Yeah. That is him stair glitching his ass off. Wait, Ladies and gentlemen, that might be a red card. That might be a hard red here. It might be. You is didn't that, see that, Chris? Right here. Look. Oh four comes to mid cut, turns the corner, and look at Tyler Fellow. Look at him. Perpendicular on them stairs. Yeah. <laughs> to it's be a hard fair, red. It's a to hard be red. fair, even if he's like standing, if he's like laying up there where he's not stair glitching it, where he's just prone, like it's the same gunfight. Like the guy that's mantling has zero chance of killing him. So like. 
it really doesn't matter. But also, did it like Brezzy or like somebody on Seattle like stare glitch the fuck out of like Carolina in one of their matches? He's getting some revenge. Uh, probably maybe. Chris, probably Chris, but unfortunately due to the AR. <laughs> the fuck? Oh my God. You ben actually got a whistle? You actually whistle. got a whistle? Yeah, I got a whistle now. Oh, Jesus ben fucking Christ. This guy's actually got a whistle and a red card. <laughs> it's comedy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Jesus you can see Christ. how it kind of all unfolded and how Carolina was able to hold. I mean, they had a big hold here on this P3. And it was honestly a perfect setup. You see Seattle, they try to make plays around the back. And then once those kills come in, they just funnel front. Like Carolina has Seattle spawning front. And there's really nowhere that they can go. Uh, and they end up getting just a really big hold here on the P3. So that keeps the game close. That gets Carolina a pretty... Massive lead there. Then we get into the next hard point. Seattle does it right back. This gets really gruel. This is this turns into a grueler here towards the end of it. We go over to the P5, and this is just a perfect break here from Seattle. So I'm going to pause it here. We're going to take a look at the setup here. Uh, Seattle break this hard point, and they do it by all wrapping P2 and trying to make plays through P2. We'll show you guys how it kind of unfolds. Somebody gets picked here, and it's Gwyn who gets picked out of water. Gwyn can't get picked there, in my opinion. If you're the guy in the yeah. pool hill, you can't die. You have to stay alive, bro. Especially because it's hard to kill people in the water when you're down low swimming or staying behind the fucking flower planter here. Uh, I mean, it's just, he dies, and I think the whole setup went to shit. So I think yeah, Gwyn can, can can't overreach out there. Yep. Can we go back and look at their setup? Like, yeah. I just want to see where all the arrows are. Because, like, if he puts himself in that spot, like... Yeah, everyone's just way too spread. He way too spread. Not, he, can, he can't die. They have period. a lot of info, though, here, Chris. <laughs> They know oh, mid map yeah. is. Oh, they know mid map is clear. They know nobody's pinching. They, the only place that Seattle could be coming from at this time is where Gwyn was looking at. It, and I would have much rather just seen Gwyn and Clay play some crossfires because they just both die and they don't get any kills here. Uh, I, I feel like if anything, you want Seattle to run out and you want to pick up easy kills, and instead they kind of overchow there's there so, in the rotation <clears throat> and they're they're chalk. There's no, they're there's so no worried. Of, they're so worried sure. about the pinch. And if you go back real quick to their setup, like the guy that's in you, essentially. Like, I don't know the timing of it. Can we, like, I just want to go back a little bit more before you see their setup. Yeah, sure. Like, right I'll, when I'll they go, get I'll off get the point. It. Number yeah. set. TJ was in mid for a while. <coughs> TJ was in so mid for, for a minute. So he gets this kill, right? Yeah, he stays yeah, around he gets mid. This kill. He stays there. So he's just playing the cutoff on you. Number six is still looking for a pre-pincher. Number seven should have been maybe a little bit more proactive and looking around here. That way he cuts that off. And then, yeah, Gwyn should have, like, yeah. They, they they had two people essentially watching the same thing because I think number six is watching a deep pinch. But unless TJ gets terrible timing and, like, the guy has fucking super fucking fast boots on, like, the flash, like, that pinch is going to be irrelevant. Like, yeah. he, they, sh they should have been focusing front there. Yeah, agreed. Sam, you got any thoughts on it? Pat, Ben, any thoughts on that setup there? Uh, it's just Gwen dying. I think he was just like trying to play an angle to like catch someone off guard, but being in the water is a power position on this hill because it's just like you said, it's how hard it is to kill you. So I think like he was just trying to play a cheeky spot with like the planner and being prone on the ledge. Um, but I've, if if he's in the water here, I actually don't mind the setup at all. I think seven's like in a good spot to cut off mid, like you said. Six can help mid stairs as well as Clay's angle if Clay yeah. eventually. Uh, eventually falls the only opening on the setup is if Gwen dies and he just picked a bad spot yeah how long until that hill moves do we know nah. really enough to move I, mean, that, that, that. I thought i thought that was confirmed. Uh, i'm pretty no, sure it is moving. They, they were it open never, to moving it. It, they were yeah so I, was oh, on a call. I thought they were I actually moving that. it no. no see i was the one that broke the news about it because i was on a call and they said that they they know that they may be kind of pushed by the community to move it so they're open to it they're not dead set on the pull hill but the pull hill they want to see how it plays so <laughs> I think we're number. I think like, I like if it. you're looking at the tack map on the bottom left corner, or, like yeah, until we I think watch the number, phase optic series and watch the. Pool I think, <laughs> I think we're number five. How long is, can you would be stay underwater? That's my question. Uh, for oh, wow. Pat, it feels like oh, you can stay time. under there for Bro, fucking ever. But I, Michael I, Phelps I saw, in that I saw under there for twenty seconds. I think yeah. it's like I think it's like ten or fifteen seconds. That's, that's insane. insane. That's crazy. That's I think that's the biggest thing. They need to like reduce the amount of time somebody can hold their breath underwater. You should instantly die if you go underwater. Yeah, <laughs> agree. It's like old code. But uh, but you can see there once Seattle breaks that hard point, that pretty much ultimately led to them uh, winning the map. So it's just a really big break there at the end of the at the end of the game. Carolina got to go back, watch that one, make sure it doesn't happen again. Then we move over to the search and destroy first round. Or sorry, not the first round. Uh, three three. The first round I have here for you guys is uh, in the middle of the map. This was uh, there was actually the game ended. That's why the scoreboard looks a little weird to you guys. They had to end the game for some problems. I think Abuza had streaks and uh, it was kind of chalked. Um, but Abuza, or sorry, uh, zero four makes the fucking play here. He finds one city, slides the corner, finds another one dark. 
just wanted to show some highlights here from the new member 04 and what this guy can do in surge because he's not zero afraid to four, hit gaps. Tom. Zero four oh four. What's the what's the game? Oh, I don't know. I I it's literally zero, I think four. it's zero four. It's zero it's four. Zero, it's zero four, but people call him oh four. No okay. one calls him zero four. I got that now. Yeah. Okay. Oh four. Yeah. Oh four. I don't really know. How it's does he like to be bro, called? Not a scene, bro. This asim a scene situation all fucking over again. Yeah. Dude. Bro, it's called change your gamer tag, bro. Oh four. I kind of fuck with it. Oh four C six. I fuck with it. No, um, is it is oh isn't it oh four because he was born in two thousand and four? Fucking hell, dude! Christ, is that why? Oh, so yeah. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I could God be wrong. Damn, I'm an old fuck. <laughs> Holy shit! Yo, if he was oh, born four. in oh four, that is insane. Oh, listen, bro. Oh, we were talking about it earlier, bro. If he's born in oh four, that's another. He was not born before Tiger in that twenty four fucking streak, bro. Yeah. Point proven. Uh, then we go over to the four three round. This is actually where Clay decides to streak. Now I don't know what you guys think about Clay's streak there. <laughs> Um, he calls a streak pretty early. I mean, I would have think that once what I mean, I guess they're trying to play a they play. Just they're the just, they're just trying to get the bomb down. Yeah, they're just trying to get it was a good play. I like the play call from uh Carolina here. Clay calls the streaks, he gets the info, he knows nobody's on B, he backs him up. Sorry, I was getting the teams confused for a second. I thought Carolina was on defense. I was like, why the fuck is Clay streaky? Uh, but he opened up the bomb site, they're able to get here, get the bomb down, and uh it made it look pretty clinical. But Seattle. They go for a little break here, and you can kind of see how this gets fucking hectic here. Gwyn's able to find one. Gwyn finds two. Brezzy tries to slide out. It's TJ who finds a couple as well. Gwyn and TJ holding down that bomb site. Love the play call there from Carolina with the streak. I uh, thought they used that streak well. And Abuza had streaks and never got his streaks back, right, in his map? Yeah, they he, out. They, it, yeah, Kyler ended up lagging out the That's round cheese. that Abuza That's got cheese. streaks, so yeah. the game ended, and he didn't get his. That's bullshit. Why don't they just re why don't they just give him his streak back? But then like replay I, don't, from I there. don't think they have a I don't think they have the ability to do that. I mean you're saying like go back and like like Nah, just like you, just run in the middle of the map, give him his streak and you know, set up you know what I'm saying? But you know, it obviously, obviously takes some time to do that. Uh, and then we go to the 4-4 four, four round. This is obviously a really big offense here for Seattle. And they actually just get aggressive here. They, they're, they're all street. They all decide to go B, and they get aggro. They're able to get the guy off the tank. They get the guy out of square, and it's just a perfect execution here from Seattle Surge. They just use their numbers. Wait, I, I got to see I gotta see what, like, Raven saw off the rip of the round that they, like, played their setup like this. Like, can we go back to, like, when they got in these positions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go all the way back. Like, to I'm the, just to curious. Because they were, if they were just like doing this, like to like like just trying to have some like cheeky setup, then that would be kind of weird. They go through but, dark. Okay. Clay throws a trophy, and they were. I think they were gonna stay pushed up. TJ starts getting tagged, so he has to run away. Uh, Seattle put pressure on him early, Chris. I think they were gonna try and get pushed up, but because Seattle put some shots there, they didn't. I just don't like the spot from Clay. Yeah. Really, I think the spot from Clay was kind of tough. He was probably just trying to stay down. And yeah, like, he he was trying to he was trying to be like sneaky, but I mean, if he just wanted to like play a safe one, he could have just gone forklift. Yeah, yeah, it, it kind of just breaks apart for him. <laughs> uh, Seattle make a good read sniffing Clay out here on this tank. I like how they approach it through dark, and Clay kind of gets taken out. It's just Clay's got to be careful uh, at his right side there because people do run up that dark lane a lot. Uh, but you can see how Seattle just kind of broke him down. They get that bomb down, and uh, this one's fucking all she wrote. 04 gets aggressive here. It almost got a little scary for a second, but they close out the round. Good plays coming in from the Seattle surge. And then we go into the next round. This is a 5 4 round here. Uh, and this is where the Seattle boys were able to have a good setup and close it out. Carolina tried to do the same thing, Chris. They tried going over to B. Uh, and the setup was just a little bit different here for Seattle. They had two guys square instead of one guy in the tank. You can see the trades go down. They also have a guy looking over him, Abuza, from deep, just putting some shots down into people. In Carolina, they just kind of funnel themselves here. They wait so long, and now eventually the Seattle Surge players are able to rotate over, pick up these lanes, and Carolina just try and trap themselves. What do you think? They waited too long Wait, there? hold on. So, uh, did the, the person that child cube, was he solo? Like, did his teammates not come to help him? And then did, and then somebody just gave up dark and got really bad timing, I think, and who got the kills? Like, I want to see this, like, play out in, like, yeah, real time. Yeah, so uh, it, it was TJ who tries to hit dark. He tagged him up. That's why TJ gets Number aggressive. Number six. So number six, help him. And he finds one. Number he gets six. Right, yeah. Did he get naded or he something? He got hit by something. He got hit. Oh, hell no. Nah. What did so he get he hit by? He probably Nate or something. He probably just didn't help him because he was weak. But like, bro, like, commit your teammates in in a fight. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we, well, Tom and I. So interesting with Fellow is like, Tom, you had like a prize pick on Fellow, and he actually got three kills in the first round, looking like he had a big map, and then he went on a pretty big oh, streak in the middle of this one. 
I'm not getting kills, so. Number six, number eight, any of them. Definitely they could have watched low, Dark. A they... little confidence and timing there. Yeah, I agree with you, Chris. Yeah, they are just, yeah, they are just losing their heads, bro. Yeah, no, nah, for sure. Uh, definitely, yeah, a little bit uncoordinated there. They weren't on the same page. TJ's pushing. Uh, somebody in the chat does want me to show the uh, good play from 04 here off the rip. You can see him with the bomb site on that mini map. He drops the bomb, goes ice cream, and uh, just makes a high IQ play here. Somebody wanted me to show this, so pulling it up for you guys. Able to find two before he dies. I like the play there in a 3v4 to drop the bomb, make a play ice cream, and find a couple kills. Good play from 04, especially for, uh, seeing some confidence from him as a new player here. It's good to see. Uh, but 04, good job from him. Seattle Surge, they end up winning that map. Uh, and then we hop on over to the control. This is Karachi control. I mean, right here, the first round. Uh, Ravens make the control look easy. What's going on with Seattle and control, bro? These guys are bro, shit at, at this game. Ass ass came out. This dead. is actually a, a buy. Look at what teams. they're doing. They're four <laughs> rounds. They're, they're just bro, keep hitting they're the dumpster. Horrific. They're literally fucking two and 16 or some shit. Sam, how come they keep hitting this dumpster? Why don't they take a route mid or some shit? Why don't they do anything productive in control at all? You know what blows my mind is like control and 17. search. Control and search like take the most teamwork out of like any single game mode in COD. Like they take the and but they're good at search. So like, how the fuck are you not good at control? Is it because like, they can't play their lives in fucking control? They they're really good in search and playing off each other info and playing lives in the one alive situation. But these fast control rounds, they don't know how to play corns and play off the info, and that's how I think they get in trouble a lot on defense. And then we watch them on offense too, because I think they're actually maybe worse on offense. I don't think they do anything together on offense enough to like make their kills matter. I don't know if they're like if they're just like lost, but like if they're a good search team, look at control as S and D, bro. Like when you're attacking a bomb site, when you're defending a, a bomb site, it's the same thing. It's just on control. <laughs> like, yeah. You can see Ravens bro. how easily they win the offense, they win the next defense, and then look at the plays Gwyn makes here for the win here at the end. I'll just let it play out. Go ahead, Ben. Are you gonna say something? I just looked this up. I want you guys to take a guess. How many offensive round so they have played 20 control maps they played invasion nine times to be fair nine of the 20 how many offensive rounds do you think they've won two twenty three uh, i'd six. say but okay. like damn yeah, but we, like you we, got your point six out of they're fucking horrible bro six out of <laughs> nine is crazy though even even for playing invasion where you're converting maybe 20 percent of those like half of the maps are still not converting it. Like, oh, right, look what Gwyn's so. doing to these guys at the end of this offense. Look what he's doing. All they have to do is kill Gwyn and Seattle mm -hmm. probably win this round. And they can't fucking kill him, bro. They just can't kill that guy. Which, by the way, Gwyn has been really good for Carolina. I know they lost today, but it's clear that he's the best player on this team. Gwyn is insane. Yeah. Um, and then that's pretty much all uh, she wrote for control. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Clay, dude. It's also as long as the list goes for good players on their team. Yeah. Oh, that's not right. Uh, it was a good play. Uh, damn, Pat, come on, Slade. It's not That's right, disrespectful. Slade. That's think, disrespectful. Think, they got good players, Pat. They got DJ. No, no, they, no. They got nah, Gwyn, Clay. Clay, they Clay, got, they Clay's got two got, average guys. Clay's actually, got, played, uh, Clay's actually guy. played so much better since stage one on this team, like in terms of his own individual performances. They just can't win online because Fellow is getting fucking turned on, and then they go to land. <laughs> they play well. Well, hold on. Clay, Clay, Clay was also super inconsistent in stage two online. That's so. fucked, Chris. <laughs> Well, both both the errors. I don't yeah, with no shit, no shit. But setup. he's played better than he did stage one, like overall. Like he's 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 actually improved, like surprisingly enough. Mm -hmm. And he he had a they lost, but he had a good series today. So we'll yeah. see. Yeah, I hear you on that. Uh, then we hop into the sub base. Uh, I wanted to go to the very end because it was a very back and forth map. It was a grueler. They were kind of trading rotations and stuff. At the end is where it got really mixy here and where. Uh, I think it was Sam and Ben. You guys were talking about some mistakes that you saw here at the end and some things that caught your eye. So I'll kind of let you guys take the floor here. Uh, Sam, what did you think happened here with uh, at the end of this sub base? What do you think happened? Uh, 04 made a fantastic rotational play to go around. He got the entry, and then Seattle decided to four hit back alley, but one by one instead of maybe jumping through the window, playing a trade, sliding for each other, hitting different angles. So you talking about right here when 04 is going around left. 04 gets the kill, hits back alley, dies, and then the next person funnier, hits back alley and dies, and then the next person funnier. hits back alley and dies. The last player funnier. also hits Dude. back alley and right. dies. By the way. <laughs> by, <laughs> one by one, Sam. Look, it's a, it's a one by one train. Look, Look there's him, one, bro. there's the other, there's Look the next. Him. Rewind it. It's, hey, not, it's, it's fucking they, dumb they and not, dumber. They not only all chow back alley, they all peek side door and none of them decide at any point to chow it together. Like every person slides across, pre aims the fucking side door, thinking that someone's going to be there, the standard chow. They say, no, nope, I'm just going to hit the back solo. Now it's true. Though. Three. They should wait for each other hitting the back, or they should just hit through the hill. Then number four, yep. Okay, well, I'm just going to hit the back. 
Number two? Okay, yep. No, I'm just gonna hit the back two. Yeah, no. Nah. I'm convinced <laughs> we watch different games, by the way. Well, what, what, what's, what do you mean, Pat? Because, Chris, did you say Clay played better in stage two than stage one? Because he went from a point nine four to a point eight eight. I didn't want to say that. Chris, you're muted, Chris. You're I muted, take that. We can't hear you. His stats overall were still better, like in terms of no, his impact no, his, and damage and everything. His overall stats went from a point nine four to a that's point just, eight. That's just his KD. You're looking at only KD. Okay, so so his KD got worse, but he got better. Yeah, his KD is not the end of the world. You can literally okay. put out way more damage. Gotcha. You can everything's I, everything is uh, important. It's not just KD. Gotcha. Okay. I, I almost feel like right there too at the end they could just play through hill. They played through window, played through works. side door. You knew, just yeah, like, you knew ones on old. O four got the entry. You have maximum two people in hill. <laughs> yeah, you ha and you have you know you had the numbers because he found the entry. You're flooding yep. in behind them. Like you know one guy's still at old too. Like you know they're out of the play. It's just a weird yeah. play there from uh, from the Seattle boys. Just doing absolute dumb shit to be honest. With you. <laughs> um, so hopefully uh, next time they just focus on playing together, focus on their trades. They probably could have broke in there and maybe won that, but. Any final thoughts there before we head into the last and final map? We have a six-star S&D here for the map five, guys. It was an it's absolute banger. This, this is a gruelly, this map. This yeah, is a it was a gruelly for sure. I'm just changing the quality in the clips. Here we go. Let's uh, switch on over. Let's take a look here. We got the last map uh, and see what's going on. First and foremost, we have a 1v3 from TJ Haley. It's a 1v3 ace from TJ he was able to find one off the beginning of the round. 1v3. You have Seattle just absolutely running. Not even... Th they're just running. <laughs> and there they go. They, they both fall. Time. They got to defend Seabon. They got to do something. They're, they're going to a bomb site. I didn't even know was there. And then you can see TJ left in a 1v1 situation. He actually just decides to kind of slow play this a little bit. It's actually 04 who runs right by him. TJ with the reads gets the 1v3 ace. To kick off the map number five, I'm thinking, oh yeah, Carolina, they're coming out in this map five. This is all she wrote. My prediction's looking good. Then we go into the next round, and Kyler, 1v3s them right back. I mean, what the fuck is going on? Bomb Remember is when we down. We talked about if you 1v3, it's impossible to lose. Bro, I was saying on the watch party, yeah, Pat. I was yeah, like, yeah, oh, I'll teach 1v3 ace. Though, it's, yeah. This is over. Carolina won. It's over. But if, yeah. but if you get counter 1v3, then it's back in their favor. Mm hmm. And take a look here how it all happens. Bomb goes down for Seattle. Hook is all by himself. And he just hits the ring around the rosy here. Finds one, slides the corner, finds two. TJ can't catch up to him. Not enough time left in the clock. Great plays coming in from Kyler here to win this 1v3. Who, man, Kyler, bro, he be running around, bro. When I be watching him, like, I feel like he likes to just run and hit shit. But when he catches flow state, bro, he, he he's hard if to his kill, His timings bro. are on. He, he looks his great pop. Yeah, bro. He has an insane pop when his timings are on, for sure. Uh, he ends up getting the 1v3 there. So great plays coming in from Hook. Then we go to the middle of the game. We go to the 3-3 three, three round here. Uh, this is where Hook... I just really like the pickup from him. So the bomb goes down here. It's a 3v4 situation in favor of the Seattle Surge, but Carolina does have the bomb down. I personally think Gwen should hit the pinch here, but I think he should wait. I think he should wait until there's, th there's some shots going down on the point. Like Once there's some movement, once there's some shots going down, I think Gwen should make his move. But he decides to bite a little early, and it's actually Hook who picks it up. Really good pickup from Hook to keep an eye out on that pinch because he wasn't watching it initially. And then I, he probably got his spidey senses tingling or something. And he turned around and picked that up. But what did you guys think about a play there from, from Gwen? It was a great pickup from Hook to watch the flank there. I think he, as someone who used to flank a lot, he should have delayed it a little bit more because you know yeah, somebody's you can't be the first. You can't be the first contact on a late pinch. Yeah, yeah you know as... Uh, when you're in that position, you know they're going to be watching the flank. And if you just give it like an extra 10, 15 seconds, you know once it starts getting to that 25, 20 second mark, they're going to start panicking and start hitting the yeah. site. And then that's when you make your move on the pinch and you hit them with a late flank and they lose fucking composure when you shoot them in the back. Uh, so it's, uh, it was a good idea from Gwen, but great plays from Hook to just pick that up and then use their numbers to retake the site. Great job there. Um, and then we move on to the 4-3 round. Uh, and this is a site that we've been seeing a lot. I mean, Sam, you said in a watch party, a lot of people like to favor this A-bomb site. Um, and it's probably just because of where it's positioned. Uh, it's pretty easy to just hit this off the rip, get your tax down. But uh, I definitely think teams are going to figure out how to counter these pushes. I mean, Seattle just hit them with a don't give a fuck push. 
and just run at them on the offense and work some trades. I mean, if you guys are Carolina there, would you have done anything differently to, to stop this? I mean, they literally blind countered this push here, and they still don't hold here on the defense. What do you guys think? Mm. <clears throat> what do you think, Ben? What do you think, yeah, play Ben? It out. Play it out really quick. Yeah, sure. Right. No problem. Seattle run right through the front and just absolutely slam them here. Look, the tags come in. No trophies on the statue. Bang, bang. 04 with one, jumps the corner, hoop with another. Got one guy trying to pinch low. He's the last guy. Down he goes. It's a clean four wipe at five seconds. I do think if you're going to play in the statue, you need a trophy there. Well, they, they trophied the Clay, original they, pre they trophied, like further I think back. Clay is holding the right here. So if fellas laying Damn, down. Damn, bro. What I, think, I, think, I, 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 yeah, I don't know why they keep going back and forth. I think Clay running away gives up the lane. That's how they're able to just kind of go through the chaos here, right? Clay gives up the right side of this push. Yeah. I think it like yeah, also. I think defending, uh, defending this bomb is kind of like a weird with the statue because they can just like run up on you really easily. Like yeah. the best way that people will play it is they'll have like a guy on the statue and he's kind of just like the bait or like the person that's like gonna be isolated. And then a lot of people will just like watch the cross from you. Um, some stuff that you especially if they don't have a trophy on the fucking statue, like that's like why they essentially lose this. They yeah. get they get back down. Hey, Sam, by what, Sam, what were you saying about the trophy? Why why did they put it so far back? Because there's pre-nades on the side, so it's literally the second that you spawn and yeah. you run to the left, you can throw a nade directly over the like building, over? and it lands where that trophy uh, is. Okay. That's so going A on defense most of the time requires two trophies if you're going to neutralize tax, which is why going A on offense is so good because like the timing of having both trophies most of the time does not line up. Yeah. Um, it's like it's like going Karachi B bomb for example and needing two trophies on the street for the cars, it's the same thing here. So if you spawn up and just throw two frags over, most of the time you're going to get a nade kill or get someone weak to be able to like slide to the statue, play a camera, or something like that. Yeah, I mean, Clayster lost absolute fucking composure. He's getting bombarded by grenades. Yep. And uh, Seattle, honestly, another great execution from Seattle there. Just to use their attacks, get aggressive. I like the decisiveness from Seattle and SND. Like, you could tell when they have a game plan. They, they were running at them. That's one thing you can't uh, take away from Seattle. They do like to run at you. <laughs> uh, just got to be careful against top teams if you're Seattle. This is where Seattle can play mind games. You know, when they're playing top teams, that uh, they're going to have to find that right balance because top teams are just going to sit back and wait for these guys. I mean, look how they play the last and final round. They run through the middle of the map here to close this series out. Um, I mean, that's, go, go that's ahead, the ben. issue, Tom. This, this play style, and they're really good at it in search when they run these set pieces. They do it in respawn. They don't do it together, and they get punished. And the problem is top teams, look, if, 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 if uh, you know, you give Seattle an SND, you're going to win three respawns against them because they can't win a fucking control. They're likely not going to take a hard point off the top teams. Like, yeah. that's the reality of it. If Seattle, listen, this is a great victory against the Ravens. They grind this out. But we need to see improvement in control 100%. And we need to see them keeping their hard point map pool to really, like, make a real run at I'll where they I'll were tell you, in Major I'll tell, you, I'll tell you why their teamwork is so, like, straightforward in search is because they got to reset after every single round where they're all together off spawn, and then they can do something and organize it. But whenever they're in a hard point or control, when they're staggered and all their pushes are staggered, they have zero reset button. In S&D, yeah. that reset button is given for you. Mm -hmm. Also, by the way, do you think Tyler Fellow shit his pants looking through an, a, a bulletproof see-through <laughs> door and seeing three Seattle surge Dude, members I run at him? I hate that this door is bulletproof. Yeah. But yo, I you hate know, it. Yo, Tyler had to have lost composure. He probably said, oh, shit. Look, he turns around. He's like, you turn, starts running. <laughs> Hey, bro, it, it just all collapsed fast. I, Seattle again, just so decisive. Thing is, though, like, what's well, so so the beginning of this round? What is Carolina doing while Seattle is literally running at this flank? Like, they don't I, know. I, I don't, don't think they don't have any. Well, first, they don't know they're here until right like, now. What's, what's they don't, they don't know anything. So long, I don't know, brother. Like. Once number five sees nothing you, he needs to cross to the statue immediately. There is no reason why he should just be sitting there. Like, you're just shitty. Like, this is what I'm saying, though. Like, I, I get Seattle, you know, is a good search team. But this is not going to fucking work against teams that actually know what's going on. Like, Ravens, obviously, I think they are not the best search team. But even then, I don't see them being this dog shit at this map for the rest of the stage. Like... They're gonna they're gonna pick up on a lot of teams are gonna start to pick up on this stuff because what the fuck are they doing, bro? There's what info do you need on this map on this bomb site? There's like no corners on it. It's so straightforward. You see nobody you, you, you see nobody you peeking on you on the statue, and then you just cross. Like mm -hmm. just move. <laughs> yeah. Uh Pat, any final thoughts on the series? I know you're putting some shit in the chat. I don't know if you want to talk about it. Oh no, that was just proving that Clay got worse for major one and major two, but oh, okay. Um no, these teams both suck. I expect them both to finish somewhere in the realm of two and five or one and six. So, <clears throat> not much, 
Not much for me. Okay. That's enough for winter Chris practice these days, Pat. You got to be careful. Yeah. It's insane. I Any think, final uh, thoughts, guys? Any final thoughts? Not really. Carolina is with losing this has to be LAG and Thieves to really have a chance to make one. Well, we have a, some. We have a banger matchup. Carolina and LAG online. I mean, someone's got to win, right? I mean, but that's going to be. Someone's going to win. Someone's got to win. But to Seattle <laughs> point, they play Optic and, and near New York next. So I think as good as Seattle looked in the series, I think they're going to get kind of slammed in those two. And we'll see Who's what got they the do. the easier schedule? Uh, Ravens do because the remaining schedule Carolina is the number one strength Seattle, of schedule, right? Yeah, because the, re the remaining schedule for Seattle is Optic, New York, Vegas, Miami, Thieves, and Phase. And then Carolina's got New York, LAG, Thieves, Toronto, Phase, and Rocker. So I think Carolina's is a little bit easier. Mm. I, I got two and five for both. Yeah, I think two and five feels like that's where this may land. All right, let's move on to the next series of the day. We have the Vegas Legion going up against the Los Angeles Thieves. This one ends up going all the way down to a map number five, where LA Thieves were able to get a 6-2 victory on 6 star. 49! They also 50-point club, the Vegas Legion, in the first map. We'll take a look here at the stat sheet. Everybody negative on the side of Vegas Purge. Obviously, what a tough nice. series. Joe to Thieves, dude. Joe to Thieves was Absolutely incredible today. That's what happens when you go through the FC Black camp, Face Black. We we make you guys the best. We we turn players into the best they can possibly be. And that's what Joe Deceives is doing here in the CDL right now. I mean, he's just letting it sing right now. Sam, I mean, we'll we'll start with you. This is your squad. See LA Thieves mm. boys. We all had Vegas going into this one, but LA Thieves get the W today. What did you think, Sam? What did you think? Uh Joe looked absolutely fantastic. Phenomenal. Man. Um absolutely he, phenomenal. he mentioned it in the post game that he was having just some confidence issues and just like he was kind of second guessing a lot of his decision making and not so much going off of instinct and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, to your point, you were I, you sounded like you were trolling a little bit, Tom, but genuinely, I think going to challengers and playing under phase black and like actually like solidifying himself and his confidence, it, it showed today, bro. He was running around the map just absolutely fucking frying. Um, and obviously 250 to 49 is a pretty unbelievable stat line, especially against Vegas, who is a phenomenal heart point, heart yeah. point, heart point team. Yeah, almost 17,000. Um, they look good, too. man. I mean, they look looked really, really fucking good today. Almost got reverse swept. Uh, thankfully, that didn't happen, but they look really good. Yeah, no, they, they continued. Do look really good. They also continued by winning two searches. And uh, we were saying that Afro was their best S and D player. I think somebody said that. So he was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he he was definitely good at search, but like, it's still good to see them get S and D wins up on the board mm -hmm. versus a team that's no, no slouch at search either. Um, without you know, with losing Afro, so yeah, yeah. things good things to come. Hopefully, Nero with a hundred kills on a series for the loss too. I don't know if you guys cut that, but I mean, that was all the, the Vista was everything the Vista, that we needed bro. to see from him. Yeah, yeah. and then this is an absolute purge disaster class to Pat's point at the top of the show. Bro, are, yeah. we, are we like I, i'm sorry but i like I, i've been begging for months now and I, I don't i don't know why we're still protecting him like if it was any other player i feel like we'd be begging for him to get dropped the only reason i feel like we're not is because vegas is a decent team but <clears throat> this team instantly gets better from a roster change almost yeah. anybody they pick up i don't think yeah, they're protecting him bro like what yeah i think the i bro, think the only thing that we we've said in a positive wait. like no the only, the only thing to drop him instantly the only thing that i was really saying well, with purge is for them to wait hold on ben damn the only Sorry. thing i would say with purge is that he has gotten better from the start of the year but you know i i agree pat i think eventually you have to just look at the drawing board and figure out like there's got to be somebody out there that they can that they can pick up to probably potentially get an upgrade here and, and get these guys because he's just having too many series now like this and it's getting to that time of the year where um they have to do something because they might dig themselves a little bit of a hole here you know what i mean if, if they want to separate themselves from the rest like they're already so they're already like it feels like they're already ahead but like even when they went to that land event, right? Even when they went to the last major, they still ended up losing to like Carolina and stuff like that. So like they need to separate themselves. And I think if they got somebody else um, over purge, they could potentially do so. I don't know. I think him improving Chris is why they kept him because he was improving from the yeah. beginning of the year and he was getting better and better and better. And they probably saw but, but some like, of them. And... Can we can we not uh, like how how could he not improve? He was so <laughs> bad. Like, <laughs> if he had a point five and goes to a point Pat, seven, like that's an improvement. But what about my Purge off your point, jersey? Purge has the fiftieth. <laughs> Purge has the current before well, before today when he had another sinker in hardpoint. He had the fiftieth ranked hardpoint KD in the league. There's forty eight active players. <laughs> so he's worse than Cod RX, and he is else he is worse out. than a non-active player in the CDL. Damn, and that was prior uh, to the two hardpoints today. 
the I feel yeah. like we're getting to a critical juncture in the season for That's Vegas insane. because I think something we don't talk about, we talk about the boneheaded plays in round 11, but they haven't won around 11 all year. And it's been abundantly clear to me now, watching last couple of series, they're also really struggling game fives now. Like this team, when they get to these gritty series, oh, and we're forgetting about whatever the fuck happened against Carolina in the beginning of the year. I forgot about that. They have a tough time closing out these mixy series. And I feel like if some of these bottom eight teams have caught up on these new maps, I feel like Vegas might have hit their ceiling and they might come back down to earth. And to your point, Pat, they may be running with a tough decision. If they don't get a lot of points to split, they want to stick it with Purge and maybe not qualify for champs. So they want to maybe make a change and try and get something going before the end of the year. It's some, a real tricky one for them. Some people really are talking is. about Vivid. Some people are talking about uh, Reese Vivid in the chat. I mean, there's a lot of players that they could probably look for the to get Vivid this team. Vivid Nero Boston duo back again. Yeah, I was going to say, that that's a duo we've already seen before, the Vivid and Nero duo. But, I mean, ultimately, it's whoever they decide to go with. But I I do expect a change uh, to be coming here soon. You know what I mean? Uh, who do you guys think would be a good replacement for this squad? What do you guys uh, think? I see a lot of people naming names in the chat. I mean, people are just coming in, spamming names. Um, you know, there's a few people out there. But a few of the names I'm seeing. People that we've seen already play in this game in the league. I think Ace and Revivid would probably be good if they're looking to outsource from, like, you know, less experienced players. I I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying it's to It's hard. Some people are saying Hixie. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of... Uh, listen, I also want to give a shout out to Exceed, like some of the guys on Face Black. Like, there, there's definitely a few people that they can go with. Uh, no, they pick they up. need somebody. They need somebody with like a decent amount of experience. They need plug and play. Simply, they, they they don't have the time to yeah, get better. Exactly. They need a plug they, and play. They can't just like go all in on like a rookie that's never played. Yeah. And on top of that, according to them, Purge was like pretty big in terms of their comms and leadership. And Purge, at least, has a lot of S and D experience. He's he's been S and D player for a long time, so. I'm sure he contributes a lot to that in terms of their like way of playing. Um, so they, yeah, they need somebody that's plug and play exactly like you said, Sam. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I would just go ace and vivid at this point in the season. You don't have the luxury of time to like progress as a team anymore. You need someone that's going to come into the system that they've established, have the experience to learn a system quickly. That's been in the Asin, league before. Vivid, I think and I think cap. you just go. And I, I think I, that I, that's their situation. At the honestly, moment. unless they get dead last and they lose like seven straight series they're not going to make a change before stage four i think this is their team for the rest of the year is my prediction i, am, Sam, I agree with them you were talking about kd he's 59th in kills per 10 minutes in hard point only god rx and worse and 60th in damage per 10 minutes there you go mm -hmm. that includes everyone that's joined the league and left etc yeah, yeah. i i want to see what the set looks like after like next week or the week after just for this stage because i want to remove like he's probably double you know, 60th after shit. this series yeah, he had some some tough hard points in this one. Well, I think Eli Sandy might be at the bottom, but he's only played one series, so kind of small sample size. Being active for series. the entire season and being oh, that low. He played, he uh, played uh, two insane. series, Ben. Two series. Well, two series at the rock bottom right now, I think, in a bunch of stats, but it's early. Yeah, anybody got anything to say before we hop into some clips from today? On this so. on All right, let's hop in. I, I'm, I have one more thing, yep. which is ahead, ben. Uh, Ellie, Th Ellie Thieves got contributions from everybody today. We've been talking about the Dan Gosey and Inshallah fucking bullshit going on here. And like, they actually stepped up and played as a team. Like, I think if you're an Ellie Thieves fan, you feel really good after this because this might be the beginning of them kind of going on a little bit of a run here with a little bit of an easier schedule. Yeah, I was apprehensive about the map pool changes because they lost Terminal and they lost Invasion Hardpoint, which were two staples in the majority of their series. So it's good to see them get like a dip, like not even definitive. I don't know, a crushing victory yeah. against a really, really good hardpoint team on a new map. Can we talk about Joe Deceives to start off this map one? I mean, Jesus fucking my own. Uh, they just absolutely dismantle. Uh, I don't have much to talk about in this map. It's just more just showing highlights of uh, fucking... Vegas getting pooped on here because it was not pretty. It was definitely not pretty. They were beating him to every rotation. They were picking up all the kills. I don't know what happened to Vegas in this map. I don't know if any of you guys have any ideas as to what happened to them here. But... I don't think they took a breath. Uh, I think yeah. that they, I think the map got out of hand in the first couple hills, and I just don't think that Vegas hit like a good reset, and the map just spiraled out of control. I think LAT was just rotating, winning the fight, and then Vegas was just going and going and going. That was an issue that uh attach brought up on land and some of their post games as well as in their stage two games was they just didn't have a way of like calming the game down in the sporadic moments they just really didn't have a good reset button and i think that map was a perfect display of it so that seems to be an ongoing issue for them yeah and then this yeah, is this is a hard point here where uh 
Uh, Vegas, they're here early. They have a pretty good setup, but look at how LEDs break this. They just four hit office and just all go through the bottom doors. And they, they just force their way in and are able to work some trades here. I mean, if you're Vegas, would you have played that a little bit differently if you're Vegas? <laughs> bro, this setup is awful. Terrible, like, right? Off, Terrible. Bro, we, already, we already talked about how dog shit it is to defend this bomb site. You're essentially all putting your entire team on the area of the map that is like hard as fuck to defend. Granted, you're defending that little courtyard. Those spots are just garbage. Yeah. Like push up, get control of that building. It's like the best way to hold it. Obviously, they may not have had the space, but even then, I'd rather like all stack under the po hard point, maybe have one person on the statue and then just literally like forcing gunfights on the bottom door. Like you're letting them get out of this narrow fucking doorway and you can see them in the door before they yeah. come yeah. out. Like I also hate that Nero's looking at top window <clears throat> with a sub from this angle. Like this angle is shit. Yeah, Gio's yeah. just holding you behind him. I would rather Nero be in you taking a fight and Gio on the statue. Yeah. I, yeah. I'd rather, yeah, I want Nero like in there, like in the mix. Like he should be on Hill with Purge, like this playing setup together. This is terrible, bro. I mean, I don't know. Like, you, like, can you go back to like basically the rotation time? Yeah, like, yeah. when in Vegas got to the yeah. ball? Like, could they have got, if they could have, they should have just ran into white, like, played bro, the they stairs. Had, wait, they Sam, were on this yeah. They were just literally pushed out. Yeah, exactly. They were literally there. <laughs> yeah. Gio's yeah, literally Purge, pushed out. Purge needs to run with his 60th ranked damage and fucking get in the building bro like go shoot your gun right. yeah, like geo is here buying war. buying time getting kills for his boys and Yo, purge bum is just me, sitting bum on me, hill bum me. i'm literally saying number four yeah, exactly. I'm bum me. Bum yeah, me. Nah, bum no i'm not even telling the bum. i'm just running off the hill well, if no one gets it that's on my team bro. In his own that's on my team like, i don't care he might be in his own head here bro this almost looks like a scenario bum. where he's like scared to make a mistake and like yeah he's playing with zero confidence zero zero confidence bro zero confidence he really has bullet he he has a fucking gibraltar shield in front of him and he's just hiding like run into the building and shoot your Fucking shotgun. Get on hand, the dude. stairs. Get yeah, on the stairs it, and head glitch it. Maybe play corn. And now, is he aiming through a fucking bulletproof door right now? No, he's, <laughs> but the thing is, no, he's 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 yeah. literally sh he's shooting at the hop down. But look at number one. He's already looking at it, brother. We are not serious right now. Yeah, this this, is, this was a trolley <laughs> setup. This was the one opportunity where I thought Vegas could bring this back with a big hold, and it just doesn't last. I mean, they just get broken. I was so bro, fast. I was cooking LAT. I was like, oh, we're four hit in the front, yeah, and then were. four seconds later, the whole they, they were broken. I was like, okay, never mind. I'm just gonna be quiet, I guess. Yeah, nah. And then we go over to the P5 hill, and you're thinking, man, this guy Cramp has been fucking cooking. Yo, Cramp, call that streaking, right? Bang, <laughs> call the streak. <laughs> Bang! Hits the fucking pole. Hits the building. Mm -hmm. Instantly hits the fucking building. Sam, Perfect. you called it during the watch, but you called it. What is it? This map? There's a glitch on this map? You can't... So I think it's... Chris, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's hill dependent on the arc of which your streak comes in. So on yeah. P5 and P1, that your streak comes in at this angle. <laughs> Yeah, I think yeah. it's either hill dependent or like where you're positioned like and looking towards. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, so when this map originally came out and ranked, I'm sure people in chat saw it. There was a clip that was going around on Twitter of someone saying they're just like, oh, nice, nice map or something. And it was this exact situation. They called it a streak <laughs> and just hit the side of a building immediately. Where, so I, I hope where they, is this I'll map based at? It. Where's this it's map like, based at? Is this I Dubai? Know, it's, on, it's on top of a building in like Dubai or some shit. Yeah, oh, it's Dubai? A spire. It's a spire. I, I was wondering if it was like Israel, if that was the Iron Dome. Just no, because it's looking there. like yeah, it's this good looks good like good Dubai almost. It's in a skyscraper, bro. Yeah, that, 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 that's tough cramp. You got yeah, you got a maneuver. Sure. You got a curve bro, there, cramp. Bro, you got a curve you, there. Bro, if like, we're not somebody, curving that, like you're not you know, watch, if you, you watch curve somebody fall, do you even have the option to curve it? Like uh Chris, what are you saying? I was gonna say if you watch somebody fall off the map and like look down, you can see them like fall all the way to the bottom of the map, like yeah, like crazy. the street. It's crazy. Nah, Pat, Pat, Purge Khalifa well, is fucking is insane. Purge Khalifa. Is crazy. <laughs> Yo, what was something in chat that is fucking incredible? Purge bro. Khalifa. Bot that Holy guy, bro. shit. Jesus oh, fucking God. Have to that What's wrong guy. with you guys? You guys are fucking sick. Pat, were you gonna say something, Pat? It sounded like you were gonna say no, something. I was I was just oh asking, like, God. you know how like when you call in the streak, it's like locked for a second? Like, is there even time to curve it? Yeah, I think there he just didn't know about it. You could I think there's a timing to, to curve so it. You're, so you're saying he's never got a streak on that map yet? I don't know. Mm. That's fucking hilarious though. Perk Somebody's had that great. Game uh and then we get into the S and E. It's a Rio hard point, and this is actually a two V four for the LAT. So you can see here. It starts with Vegas. They're able to get two. 4v2 situation. Joe's able to trade one. Nasty finds another. Joe finds two. This instantly turns into a 2v4 to a 1v1. What happened to Vegas there? How did they, they all did, collapse? They had, 
I got Joe to Thieves, bro. Joe to Thieves, baby. Yeah, Joe to Thieves going absolutely fucking nuts, and then we'll skim through it just to see how this 1v1 ends up uh, kind of unfolding, yeah. but he just shoots Dylan off the yeah, bomb. It's so great place. in the chat said, Tom thinks we're talking about Bro, I thought you Khalifa. were talking about fucking me and Khalifa. That's what I thought you were fucking talking about. Wait, you know the Burj about. Khalifa in Dubai, man? No, I don't. Ah, I told you. Geez. I it's said, the, what the, the fuck is like Burj got to do with building, Tom. It's that the fuck oh. is going on here? Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Fucking kidding me. So what the fuck are you guys talking about? Somebody said, what a moron. You know what I mean? Tommy's, Fuck Tommy's first shot to level club in a fucking minute, bro. You know, I was like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? That putana. Let's but, keep it but, going. Go ahead, I'll say this about Joe. Listen, Joe's biggest issue, I think, on the previous iteration of this team was S and D. If he's got confidence in S and D, and again with the with sort of map pull changes, a little bit some of these quicker maps, uh, where he can really shine with the sub, I think it's gonna be great for Thieves because I was a little bit worried. With this change that their SD might fall off, the control might get better. But if they get better across all three game modes, bro, it was hard to have confidence, bro. He had Afro on the squad. Like, ah, chalk it Jesus. Up. That's fucked, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah, but Marcus is Marcus is actually pretty good at search now. He was yeah, good at search. He yeah. was, but his his search He's an absolute destroyed. liability. The thing respawn. is, though, his search gameplay is so is literally the complete opposite of the way he plays in respawn. Yeah, he in runs search. at you in search and camps in corners in respawn. Yeah, he literally just has no idea like the time. <laughs> Sam, by the way, last time someone got fifty point club was a thousand days ago. Damn. Um, who was it? Uh, it was Rocker. Ultra Rocker, Damn. Ultra 50 point club, 34 point club. Max. No. Sam, this is where you lost <laughs> forward like, LAD, oh, Sam. Nobody, yeah. nobody watching. Yeah. We're not watching here. the pinch, Tom. Yeah, I, I, I think they, they ended up making that adjustment after this round. Dan G um, took one too many rips and forgot to pick up the pinch. <laughs> yeah, how many fucking rips at a Papanya is he taking? Because Purge just gets an easy two piece around the pinch. Uh, definitely think if your thieves there, I, I think he was just trying. What happened to you, Sam? Is I think Dan's trying to watch their back because if you look, yeah, both players looking are looking at because he has two people bridge. Yeah, put two yeah. people. Are bridge looking at uh two people are you looking bridge and dan's probably like fuck i have to pick this yeah. up uh and he kind of gets taken out here why are they both looking bridge though well, I, I think six know. was turned looking to like zig stairs at some point and then i think like eight was holding bridge but it's just a shit setup it was just miss cone they just yeah. had to have someone look at both so dan could turn for the pinch uh yeah it was uh good plays there from purge to find a gap there on the pinch break the setup then we get to the two four round uh this was a round here where joe d just absolutely shits on these guys. There's one. It's a fucking uh, 3v3 situation. Somehow, Gio doesn't get the trade. There's two for Joe. Able to play his life as well. No trades coming from Vegas. Joe, able to fly around this corner and pick up three. I mean, this is just the Joe Deceive show, ladies and gentlemen. I can't believe they didn't get that trade there. They got to trade Joe there, man. I would like to see Gio just pull out his pistol there and just slide out. He lost Gio him. Gio was like he almost just like didn't see him. I think him. he lost him. I think he lost yeah. him. Nah, he probably, when he when he came around the corner, he thought he cleared it, but the corner was probably deeper than he like thought it was and didn't see Joe. <clears throat> and then we go to the <laughs> last and final round here, and this was just a perfect execution here from the LA Thieves. I mean, you can see Vegas. It's a 4v4 situation. Vegas get the bomb down B. What happens here for Vegas? We'll take a look at the setup. Now, me personally, they had a trophy on this bomb site, but the trophy ended up breaking. I think when that trophy breaks, Purge needs to get the fuck up out of there. I feel like because he, I, I feel like once that trophy goes down, you know, tax are going to be flying in. I, I think right there, they got to try and make a play, get out of there, maybe play through bridge, play you, like try and push something out. Instead, they seem yeah. kind of turtled on hill. And it ends up hurting them here. Like this, this setup here, I feel like you're just asking to get broken down here well, with this setup. I, yeah. I agree with you, Tom, but Dell also has a huge 1v1. And if he actually wins that 1v1, I think they potentially get a clutch. Uh, I am, all bridge. I am not a fan of staying up here whenever you get the bomb down. It's you literally either, terminal B bomb. Yeah, you yep. either yeah, you either have to yeah. back up and play your side, or you like wait till you get info and just pounce and run at them like at yeah. the perfect timing while they get close. But what do you mean deal when a 1v Ben? He won a 1v1, was one shot and got traded. No, I know. I'm saying, but if he wins the fight bridge and he gets that, gets oh, trading, I mean, bro, that's just hoping that Dylan yeah, yeah, attacks no, fucking forks on 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. him. But I, I'm saying, like right here, uh, they definitely should try and work on a setup. I, I, I just want to see them push something out, bro. Like, even if you're pushing out P2 and maybe you can work like a late pinch or something, I just feel like like turtling on bomb site is just never gonna work. Like you're gonna get funneled unless they just run out like a bunch of morons and don't have any coordinated push and you just kill them all one by one. But uh, it was a good retake from LA Thieves right there. Phenomenal plays as they use their numbers, they use their tax, uh, and they break down Vegas. So if you're Vegas right there, probably losing a little bit of composure. It's probably around that could have went their way. Then we go over to the control. Now, this is all defensive wins. There's not much to show here. It's invasion control. It's an absolute snooze. Uh, but I will say, 
I thought Vegas was going to win 3-1. Look at this. Two and a half ticks, three dead. There is no possible way Vegas loses their round. Oh, that's right. It's Dan Ghosty who somehow finds three with an MCW. Slides on in. Three pieces of them. Did you just get fucking slammed? Is that how this fucking went down? Sorry, Tom. No, uh, he was like, he strafed the heady. Like, reload or you're not ready for the fight and then just kills him. Yeah, I don't it, it, it did. It, it, it wasn't as bad as it seems. Yeah. Like Gio, like crouched like around the corner, peeking it, and Dan was just ready for the fight and like slides on him. Yeah, but it was a good play from Dan Gosey. This was like I said, five defensive rounds in a row. Nobody was able to catch it at eight point, and that was probably the closest opportunity to do so, which is Vegas right there. But uh, great plays coming in from Dan. Uh, I cannot believe this map was not replaced in the map pool. Yeah, I was going to ask you guys that because I actually have it written down. Do you guys think Invasion Control should have been replaced? I mean, watching this it map is fucking... A tr it's terrible, bro. It's terrible. It was just I split between High Rise and Invasion. That's why. It's not that like they didn't want Invasion gone. It's that people also wanted High Rise gone. So there wasn't enough votes for either one to actually change rise, the map pool. Uh, high Rise is... Well, the thing is, like, Control is like the game mode that I feel like people are going to have the most incentive to protect their map because it's so limited. So that's why you're going to see a lot of bias there. But, like... From a non-biased perspective, the high rise is even when it comes to like offense and defense in terms of like how it's played. You can get spawn trapped on both ends, and I feel like the points are not like unfavorable to like offense or defense. Yeah, Karachi's we play devil's kind of advocate. Like, invasion, invasion has a high just... skill gap. If you're good at offense on the map, you're a dominant invasion team, and if you're not, you're you get slammed. Yeah, that's I guess that's true. But yeah. I don't know. and then I want to go to the end that is Vista. Now, there's not much to say. Uh, during the Vista, pretty back and forth map. I think we could all agree Nero was just putting on an absolute masterclass in this one. But even with Nero doing what he's doing, I mean, just look at the rest of his team. Purge continuing to struggle. We got a tie game here going to the end. And take a look at this, the route here that Nero's taking. I actually really like this route. I thought this was a great route. But it was even a better pickup from Joe Deceives. He read the pinch here from Nero, which I think is a crazy heads up play from Joe. And he's reading these spawns on him as well. But he ends up falling. And then you can see how the rest of this kind of plays out. Dan's by himself. The routes from Nero. The spawns come in. It gets a little hectic. Uh, at uh, Vegas, they were able to break into this hard point and soak up some of his time here at the end. And Nero, he continues to just find kills left and right mid-map. I mean, like you said, Chris, this map is all mid-map, bro. If you're a sub-player, I feel like that's the one place you'd be living on this map. It's just mid. Yeah. Just constantly hitting mid off spawn, making 100%. plays. Also, one thing I just want to note about the spawns on this map, I think as teams start to play and you're going to notice the better teams are going to do it more, they're going to be very careful about how far they push out because, like, Joe Deceives being pushed out that far while still maintaining, like, the, um, the hill control was split spawning a lot of players pretty much on both sides of the hill, which pretty much ended up causing them to get broken. Um, mm -hmm. I think if you're a team on this, like, if you're playing this as a team on this map, whenever you push up, you push up as a team and take a side of the map because you want to minimize the amount of split spawns you get on this on this map because it's so mixy. Yeah. I, now, I will say, bringing this up, okay, let's take a look at the mini-map here. LA Thieves only need six points to win the game. <coughs> oh, Definitely the think oh, LA no. Thieves made some mistakes here, uh, and I think the first mistake is Nasty, right? Nasty's on the point. He's got a guy looking over him. He also has number eight coming from mid, who I feel like can, can pick up the cross and maybe help him out uh, And number six. But Nasty, he ends up challenging off the point, and he ends oh, up he dying. Got banged. Yeah, mm -hmm. he got wall bang, which you can get wall bang through that wood. It's it's takes a lot of bullets, but because he chowed and got one shot, they were able to take him down. It just Ghosty needs to be the first man to get into contact. That Dan needs to shoot first there before Nasty Chow's there. Bro, you need five seconds, six five. seconds. If just you stay don't in the lay point. your ass on the backside of that point. Yeah, I just I would much rather Nasty just sit backside point and preem his mid. Just watch your mid, hold backside point. You know they're coming from the other way. Let you should Dan... literally just like off angle on the backside and team shot mid with eight and six, especially because Dan absolutely rips whoever the fuck is on top cat for the first blood in the situation. Dan gets a kill before near Nasty even dies. Like kills. he should just be off angle on the backside of the point, team shotting mid. Oh, and so then, wait, like uh, purge, purge makes an purge, insane yeah, purge makes a page. great play. Page Louis, or Purge literally made the perfect play. I actually love this route. Um, this is what I was talking about. How like This is like the main route you're going to see people take on these outskirts hard points. They're going to try to sneak around Cafe to get mid control, and he does just that. They don't see him, um, and they just he gets a yeah. two-piece. Yeah, I think the guy on old, I mean, I guess it's just sort of you have to play his mount more, but and the guy it's on old has got to look for that, yeah. Then it's Nero who floods on in, and look what Nero does here. He finds one, jumps the corner, finds two, jumps the corner again, finds three, three pieces and four the win. And Nero, what a fucking map. 41 and 28. That Z Carbone, ladies and gentlemen, going absolutely nuts. <laughs>
Uh, <laughs> phenomenal plays. I think if you're LA Thieves, you're kicking yourself after watching that Vista hard point back at, at the end there. They definitely made some mistakes and uh, probably could have simplified it. Just hold your lanes, play some crossfires. Instead, they over chow and uh, kind of costed them there. Any any final thoughts on that Vista, guys? No, uh, I got one. Yeah. The left spawn is now 3-0 and on Vista. Mm, Good side interesting. Spawn. Yeah, undefeated. Wait, is are you talking about like the P2 side? It's very interesting. Or, P3 side. P2, sorry, P3, P4 yeah. side. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Good side um, Vista. Yeah, good side Vista. And then uh, after the Vista got really mixy there towards the end. Then we hop in to the last and final map, which ended up being a six star S and D. Um, and we'll start off things with the first round. It's not another four v four retake. So take a look at the setup here from Vegas. Four v four retake. They get the bomb down yet again. We'll play it out here and see how LA Thieves was able to break this down. And then you guys can kind of break it down on how you guys think uh, or what you guys think Vegas should have done differently. I mean, wh right off the bat, Joe receives great grenade to get a first blood there and kill that guy off the bomb. I don't know how that guy got naded, uh, but he gets taken off the bomb site here. And then Dylan, he's able to find one, but gets instantly traded by Nasty. Good shots there. And then last guy up is trying to make a play. It's Purge, and uh, they're just able to swarm on in and break that. I actually really like how LAD's played through mid and played through their spawn here and kind of like pinched it in. Uh, and I do like the grenade there from, from Joe. He obviously found a first blood there with that grenade. It was a good pick from him. If you're Vegas, guys, anything you would have done differently? I love the way how LED set up a pinch and they took routes here and kind of came um, from every angle. Thought I it was just a great this, retake. I just think this bomb, again, is like an area where you're kind of just like a sitting duck. Um, outside of like people hiding in the water, there's not really any like crazy off angles or places that people can hide with like a ton of cover to finesse. Um, it's pretty standard, and it, I think Vegas should have probably tried to work to try to, like, push out a side, you know, and get some, like, tor side type of timing rather than kind of just sit on the site. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this happened a couple times, this this uh, this map where Vegas were set up, uh, and they get broken. Pat, Sam, Ben, any, anything on a setup from Vegas that you see that they probably could have done differently? No, I'm just, no. I agree with Chris. It's just... It's same thing we brought up earlier when you trap yourself on a post point situation on bomb it makes if you don't have to look for the players you just run on the bomb and take the gunfights it makes it, the the defense a lot there's easier just, there's just not a lot of like good corners like they're all like super easily to, easy to clear and i feel like you're not going to get a lot of like value from like staying around the bomb site but mm. people will find ways to plan like people got to min max this that map uh bomb site a little more and i'm sure by the time we get to the major people find a way to get a post plan there we're not getting hemmed in like pretty bad Listen, it was just a bad day to plant bombs, Tom. The average win percentage is 70%, but today it was 40 Damn. when bombs yeah, got planted. So it, was just, it was just a bad day. Yeah, that's actually a bad Is it a coincidence that we saw, like, two or three? What is it? No, we actually saw Rio search, two six-star searches. We saw a lot of, like, these smaller maps, and I feel like they were... A lot of those post plants were on those sides, or on those maps, or bombs, rather, where people were trapping themselves. So that's kind of, I think it's just maps that depend it. Yeah. Bro, I've been ranting about this for fucking weeks. Uh, originally, I brought it up on the A-bomb Karachi, dude. If you plant the, like, if you, if your objective on offense and S&D is to just get the bomb down and then your fucking brain turns off, you're not going to win the post plants. Yeah. If you're, if you're planning it with no, like, plan afterwards, is the, that's where 40% post plant comes yeah. in. I also I think, think I, Sam, I think people just can't adapt mid-round, too. Like, just their situational mid-rounds, like... How, how many times do you have a plan, Sam, and it just goes to shit because something happens and you have to adapt based off your yeah. information? Or we'll get it's, 10 in the next series. For yeah, sure. and, so, think, and some teams just don't adapt. But go ahead, Chris. I, I was going to say, I think Invasion is like the only like bomb, like not the only bomb, but the only map where like both bombs, I feel like you can plant and hang around the site and it's a good play. But like Karachi has one site that's like that. It's the statue one. Rio, I guess, has one site. But like, I think fucking six star, like both bomb sites, you have to like take control of a side. You can't just like sit by the bomb yeah. and like win the round. I thought Nero was going to clutch this for a second. If he wins that fight there, he probably shoots this guy off the bomb and clutches that. It was a really big win there from, uh, who was that? Joe DeSees, right? Yeah, Joe DeSees was yeah, a big Joe. win. Nero was uh, obviously, he's a, he's a scary player, man. This guy Nero was shooting, but great wins from Joe DeSees there. Great retake again uh, on a 2 4 round. LA Thieves, uh, they, they rolled through this SD and they rolled through him. Vegas kept getting picked. We're going to the, to the last and final round here. Just so you could guys see how LA Thieves was able to close it out. But, Pat, any final thoughts on the series here with the Vegas Legion and the Los Angeles Thieves? I fear that a roster change would have this result go the other way, Tom. But um, mm. I, I, I will say, I will say, I think, you know, we were talking about this before, like who we think is going to finish in that fifth, sixth. 
I could see this being uh you know these two teams battling for that, Th- that thieves in Vegas. spot online. At least online, yeah. Yeah, no, I could see that too. I felt like this was a good matchup today. I felt like it could have gone either way. But Ben, why did you go? Mm? I because because I talked about it earlier in this this segment. I don't really Vegas's big problem that we haven't talked a lot about is they're terrible in round elevens and terrible in game fives. I don't know if a one person change for Persia is going to fix that issue. They wouldn't go game five. Well, that's the that's the counter argument, but it's still going to happen. It's going to happen against the bottom eight teams. And I would argue that Perge, Perge is one of those. Like we can say he's good at SD all we want. But from what I've seen, he's not very icy in the moments where it matters. Just like yeah, in your, uh, I like they got two players. Doing I, mean, the thing is, I don't though, think bro, he's the one like making those. Well, ahead, Chris. I, I, obviously, but like the thing is with this like Vegas team is hardpoint is their strongest game owner. Like, and he, they still have one of the worst, if not the worst, hardpoint players in the game on their team statistically. Like, you can't have your best game mode be a game mode where you have a liability on your team because now, like, yeah, as much as it's your best game mode, there's always just going to be that like looming like fact that like if he just has a bad map you are losing your best game mode and now you're you're going into maps and modes that you're not particularly strong at like if you're you have to like double down on the fact that you're a good hard point team and pick up somebody that's at least going to shoot their fucking gun in your best game mode yeah uh agreed i agree with that chris i actually don't uh any final thoughts guys ben uh sam pat chris any final thoughts on that series great series we were very good series. LAT looked good man that was they like a good. like an actual quality win i think I'm we're glad. all high on vegas I think like we would, everyone in, on this panel would probably pick Vegas against anyone that isn't a top four team. Yeah. So um, it was I'm a really just, fucking great win. I'm just glad that Joe played well because he got a little revenge, yeah. uh, you know, type of type of deal. And uh, he, I think he was done dirty, you know, being dropped off that team. And obviously, like the results showed, like you know, after and they ended up picking him back up. So happy for Joe, man. He's yeah. a good player. Yeah, good job, uh, Joe DeSees. Before we move on to the next series, little announcement for you guys. Want to give a huge shout out to Steel Series. They will now be our new sponsor of the flank moving forward. Can we get a W spam in the chat? I know a lot of the people over at Steel Series really excited to work with them and Obviously, we love the product as well. We love the Steel Series products and everything that they make over there. So we are super excited to be working with them. So everybody show Steel Series some love. Get a W spam in the chat and uh, and huge shout out to them. We'll be doing a lot with them moving forward. And so. one thing, Tom, is I highly recommend you keep watching our content because there may or not be op- may or may not be opportunities to maybe win some free gear. Yeah, guys, we're gonna be doing months. a lot of giveaways. I'm talking headsets, keyboards. Mouses, mouse pads, whatever the hell you guys want. We're going to be giving away a lot of stuff. So just stay tuned for that. And uh, huge stat, uh, shout out to Steel Series. We, we, we love you guys. So shout out to them. Uh, let's move in. Uh, move on to the last match of the day. I feel like this is what everybody has been working for or waiting for. We got Atlanta Phase going up against Optic Texas. And this one ended in a 3-1 finish in favor of the Atlanta phase uh granted there were a couple maps that got really really close and a lot happened in this series so there's a lot to talk about banger scroll down and take a look at the stat sheet here and see what's going on uh just pretty balanced on on both sides i will say pretty balanced here but we'll start with you sam on the phase optic series what did you think about the series we had a banger here this was a crazy series this was insane yeah, um, first and foremost, I think the thing that stood out to pretty much everyone before the series started were the maps. Um, we had two pretty unknown quantities here in the double six stars, but we had the double high rise in the series, which was optics veto for, I don't know, a stage and a half at this point because of phase. They started vetoing double high rise because of phase and they got the ego chow on Rio. Um, granted, optic is no slouch on Rio, but phase is undefeated on the map. It, it's like their bread and butter. Um, so we clearly got a optics show me what you're made of moment um and granted they got 3-1 and they did end up losing all three of the maps that uh everyone thought that they would but it was a a phenomenal series um dashy leveled up to the the bruce that we were kind of waiting on everyone was harping on him a lot for his gameplay statistically within the phase matchup everyone's like kind of pointing out the point eights and saying he needed to step up he had a great day today shots he played fucking unbelievable call of duty today but um there were moments man similar to Every series that these guys have played so far, that Optic just cannot get that last kill, cap that final point. They just cannot seem to get over that last hump to beat this phase team. Um, and I feel like we say it every time these guys play is like Optic should have won this map. Uh, Optic should have won this map. Phase clutched up here, but when you do it six times in a row, six series in a row, um, you kind of gotta 
start drawing some conclusions. Yeah, before we move on to the next person, we did get a tweet from Shotzi after the series. Not sure what you guys think about this, but he said, GG's phase lost 3-1. Good series to test out our map pool. We will bounce back next week. So Optic uh, testing out the map pool here. We were a little confused by the vetoes when we first saw them. Uh, and we were like, hmm, this is interesting. Uh, so uh, what do you guys think about Optic strategy here? Testing map pool? I mean, Chris, we'll go to you. What, what do you think? I think both teams are pretty much solidified a top four team. And as Pat said before, um, the, the like their matches or regular season matches don't matter as much when it comes down to playing each other. So I think like if you're phase optic, New York, Toronto, like when you play a good team, you want to find an edge any way possible. So testing quote unquote, testing a map pool is actually a good idea. But I mean, I called it before, um, the show, the, the show today, I was like, if optic is going to have a chance against phase, they're going to have to get good at one of these maps that is new in the map pool. And clearly they're trying to make that six star work for them. So, um, good for them. Um, but a little bit about the series in general, like, bro, I feel like FaZe played dog shit COD today. They did. And they still got the dub. Like, their teamwork was off. None of them were having, like, a crazy outstanding performance. I'm honestly kind of mind blown how they were able to win this series. I know Optic definitely choked a ton, but, like, that was unfucking real. Well, I think Abe tweeted after the series that he had a massive migraine. I'm sure staring at a fucking computer monitor with a migraine is probably a this one. I don't get migraines, but I assume it's really bad. I'll say on the map pool thing, the real only like the only wrinkle really in the map pool was the high rise control because I think Obix is in a real tough spot in the search and destroy map pool against his team with terminal out because they know that FaZe is really good at Rio, so they removed it in this series. So FaZe picked high rise on them. Like, I guess you can flip flop that, but it's kind of a pick your poison situation. And I think it really shows, I think, the solid thing on the phase end and why they're so good at searching this game. People are coming in a hard game planning them. And yeah, they win those rounds in the beginning of the map, but then phase counter adjusted. These teams don't know how to counter that counter adjustment and phase ultimately just kind of grind it out via some clutch plays. I, I don't mind that they tested map pool against them. Um, and I'll tell you why. Um, I actually think it's the best team for them to test map pools against because to me, and I think the way they see it, they can't beat these guys. They know it. And so it might as well use it as an opportunity ah, to test maps um, that they're going to play against other teams that they can beat. Um, and I think also, um, I think I know now what the C in optic stands for. Um, I don't know if oh, you're gonna say choke. This, are you gonna but, say choke? Um, oh, dude, are you fucking kidding me? There it is. <laughs> oh, Jesus fucking Christ. The fuck we, is can we also look at one more thing, Tom. And I want to, I want to yeah. ask this question to probably Sam first. Mm. Pred in, Pred in, uh, um, we, we talk a lot about how like Katie doesn't tell the full story. I think AG and Simp had very identical kill and deaths. But I think you would agree, Sam. I think probably uh, uh, Simp was probably the more impactful player in the series in AG, right? Yeah, I think um, this is a series where you can look at like a 1.0 and draw whatever conclusion you want. But I think AG was a pretty non-factor. Um, obviously, we all watched the whole series. And the only real crazy standout moment in the series was, I believe, the end of one of their defenses on the on the high-rise control. Um, that was really the only moment throughout the series where I really noticed AG like making a crazy player popping off. But... Um, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I think we were kind of looking for him to step up here because I think we were all kind of looking at Shotzi and, and the stuff that he was doing this series for sure. And kind of like Shotzi waiting for Pred to, to level up a little bit here. Um, especially because again, uh, when we start talking about the series and I mentioned Bruce, if Bruce is going to step up to the level that people were waiting for in this phase series, cause they were so hypercritical of him, he needs to have the consistency that the others brought and to have him play well and then to have Pred regress a little bit, even with a 1.0, like, I don't know. It, it's de definitely left a little bit to be desired for me in the series. Wait, AG was, I don't know about, well, AG was dropping 0.8s against FaZe and some of these other series, so I, I feel like they actually got a contribution I, from AG. It was Ken that fell off. Go ahead a little bit. I think I, I think but, that you don't notice it as much when he's playing against second, worse guys. teams, but the thing about Pred's, like, play style is that a lot of the time he's, he's waiting to initiate off of, like, information or, like, somebody else going in and he's kind of like like he plays kind of like a like a, like his name like a pred right like a predator where he's just like hiding waiting for like his prey and then like as soon as he finds that opportunity he pounces right but like the difference between him and simp is that simp still will initiate like a lot of engagements and a lot of plays even if he has to while like i feel like pred doesn't do that as much and i feel like that is why you see him have be less impactful against these teams because he's not going out there and making a play happen like shots he is 
he's kind of always playing that defensive end and then kind of waiting to strike at the right time where I feel like when you're playing a team that is going to make mistakes, they're going to give you a lot of opportunities to do that and be effective. But when you're playing with a team or against a team that doesn't make a lot of mistakes, those opportunities are going to come way less and you're going to be a lot less effective. in and that it's, sense. A con- it's a compounding issue, Chris, because on the side of phase or whoever their team is, if they know that AG is the last one alive, they know where he's at. They know he's not going to be Eagle challenge. Like he's like Tyler Beasy or Shotzi or whatever. They know he's going to be playing a corn or playing a heady or lying down. And so I think AG has got to continue throughout the season to adapt his play style to what this team needs. And if he can do that, I think, you know, look, they were a couple of kills off of really converting the series against phase. I think they legit could have three owed if they had played their cards, right? Like just a couple of tweaks. And I think I'll think it's a real chance. I don't think Pat, six, I think six Pat's O's. fucking faded. Six O's. Uh, well, okay. Six O, right. But they're 19 and six map count against them. So they've played six series and Optics only won yeah, on average I'll, one map a series. Optics three. Well, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I think Optics should have three of them in the series. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's just not how it works. But um, nah, I, it's I mean, true though, Pat. Did it? They clutched off for sure, bro. Ace eight, eight or uh, bro, phase, phase clutched phase was playing with their toes yeah, today, bro. But, like, it, but if a team is 19 <clears> and six against them map count, like clearly they are just a step ahead. Like that's that's yeah, what I said when we started talking but about eventually, it. Eventually, if you can figure out to get one, that one's in the grand final of champs, it'll all been worth. Like it. Like if yeah. Optic was gonna be phase, today yeah, was their opportunity. And, today and, was the day. And, and yeah. pig fl- pigs fly. Like I don't know what you're trying to get at here. <laughs> Either I'm way, saying, I'm saying it's an iterative. I'm saying it's an iterative process into AG. Look, I think he's got to figure out how to adapt his play style and make changes so this team can concede, succeed and lift trophies. And right now, in series against FaZe, I think his play style gets exposed. Yeah, uh, that, I, don't, I, I would don't argue think... that Shotzi's does as well. Like, just because it didn't in this series, it definitely has. It did at the event. Okay, well, it, well I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to I'm not gonna say that any one player here is going to just all of a sudden either become worse or, like, not consistent. But in just in general, like... The fact that Shotzi and Dashie, at least for now, overperformed in terms of their relative performances against this team, that's not going to be sustainable. The only way this team starts to beat FaZe is if FaZe gets worse or they find edges up on these other maps, which I guess on the on the hard point six star they did. And we didn't get to see that hard point on uh, or the S&D six star yet because they ended up like not extending the series. But like they're in a tough position because... Personally, I think FaZe is going to be really strong. They're already really strong at Rio, but they're going to be a really strong Vista team as well. So, like, they're going to have to find a they're going to have to find a map that they can, you know, contest them on that they're good at already, which is going to be difficult. And not to mention, bro, FaZe's control is fucking absurd too. And at least when it comes to like Optic, they they don't they don't they also don't have a control like to stand on against this team for the most part. So like I don't know, optic at least from a map pool perspective is in a really tough spot against this phase team, even when they're overperforming statistically, like they did this series. I mean, dude, the, uh, the thing you guys think like I'm pulling against optic, I'm not. Like I actually want optic to win. They're literally giving Draza free wins. Like he's gonna pass my all-time record of of series one against optic because every series <laughs> is just it's freebies yeah. for him. <laughs> yeah. You are fucking so, dumb. For people, bro, in, the chat, for people in the chat that are mind blown that I said overperforming, yes, overperforming. Shotzi and Dashi have not played to this level against this phase team this year yet. They have, they've contested them in a series, right, at the at the major and stuff like that. But the way Shotzi and and, and uh, Dashi played today has not been a thing yet until now. So overperforming, yes. Can it continue? Sure, it can. Do I think it will? I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, any thoughts before we head into some clips, guys? Any any thoughts? Yeah, let's, let's, nah, I let's, think the majority of the series is told in, in the clips for sure. Yeah, uh, let's start with the clips here. We start things off on six star. Atlanta phase actually had a pretty good uh, start to this map. Uh, they find themselves a little bit of a lead, but take a look at how they break this P3 hard point. I mean, we talk about this hard point being a tough hard point to break. Uh, phase, granted, didn't get a lot of time on it because Optic did salvage it a little bit, but... This is a time. This is a hard point where Optic probably should have had a full sixty, and instead turned into like a white contest. Just fucking, a lot was going on here. They didn't get a clean full sixty here. You can see how the spawns flipped for phase so, as well. And- so Tom, one of the hardest things to do, I think, and I'm sure Sam and Chris and Pat and Tom, you guys can all agree, is when you don't get that first trade and the first person dies. The worst thing is watching this back and people are dying running backwards. Like find that balance of trying to get into a tighter setup so you can force trades and crossfires but also not getting blooded is so hard. And you look at number two. I know he's just trying to get in and get the trade, but if he holds the middle there and, like, maybe guarantees the one, maybe they can pitch the guy front, play from the front. Instead, he gets, you know, they get two bloods here and it's an easy clap. Yeah, they're a little you know, stagnant once, here. Once number three dies, the back is irrelevant, especially with him seeing two. Like, number two is going to back up, and essentially his play is completely reliant on him getting a two-piece. Like, 
if if you see two people going around the back and you're the only one there, you should literally play to. You're not playing from the front of the hill. Yeah, yeah, you have to like. Yeah, exactly. You're now playing from the front of the hill. Exactly what Sam said. Yeah, uh, and, and that, that was to my that was to my point. If number two holds middle, guarantees that kill. Number three is going to spawn middle. They can try and play from the front. This is like, like an on the fly. Eight. This is an on the fly thing yeah. that I think Optic has struggled when they do play against Phase with because. To Chris's point, when you double hit the back of a, rot of a rotation, as soon as you, especially guaranteed info, if he sees one, it's a little bit different, but he saw both. So at that point, to Ben's uh, critique of Shati here, he should push out the front of the hill or chow through the front of the hill and then turn and spawn trap whatever kills they get because FaZe is voluntarily flipping themselves into the back of the hill. So if you use your numbers, trade through the front, kill the guy front, uh, and repinch his mid, whatever it may be, and you instant turn, that's the kind of thing where I think phase sometimes is quicker to adapt in the hard points as opposed to optic. Granted, it's a new map, different concept, whatever, but that's a general hard point concept that I think phase is a phenomenal job of on in the top it's, four matchups. It's, it's also just a numbers game. Like this guy's spots two in the back. The guy that's on top of the balcony, he's in an engagement front. It's like you have all the numbers and the information. You just have to react appropriately. <clears throat> yeah, it, it they, they were pretty stagnant on this rotation, too. Like, they need to be in situations where they can trade each other and kind of help each other out. And just the way that they were set up, they couldn't do that. They just kind of got sold out, and they, they got taken down one by one. And, and again, they, they do salvage it a little bit, but FaZe were able to get back in at the end. I mean, this, this could have been a full 60 for Optic, and we know how important these hills are. So they're just going to want to make sure they, they clean it up on that hard point because it's a very important hard point in this map. What is, num what is number one doing? What's Ken doing? Look, go back. What? Like... When he was like holding mid, like he just like tweaking. Look at look at this. Like as no, soon as his teammates die, he's just holding mid, and then he just like wraps the back of the bar instead of like running towards the hill. He was he was basically where the B bomb is, Tom. Like he could have easily just went up the stairs and helped his teammates sooner. I don't know. Yeah, I think weird. he was just watching pinch until his teammate came and picked it up, and then he gave it up. It just looked weird. I think that's what he's doing. But good break there from Atlanta Phase. Uh, then we move on to the next clip from the map. This is where Optic, uh, they actually get a really big hold here uh, going into the second rotation. They held this P3 a lot better. I wanted to go into the listening with Optic Texas and see how the guys were sounding. Let's tune in. All right, it's going to do it for the listening uh, with Optic Texas. What did you guys think of the listening? They sound great. They do that sound good. That was actually really good. Their comms were small talk where it was all there. Like, you could tell they were playing this hard point really well um, just off their comms. Yeah, they got a really big hold on that P3. That that The second P3 is what they should have done on the first side. It, it kinda, you kind of got yeah. to see how, how, how they were able to hold it and get a full 60 there. And then we go into the Atlanta phase listening. They actually did back-to-back -back listening. So let's compare Atlanta phase to Optic Texas. Let's tune in. Martin closing. I'm 
I'll see Nick. I'm gonna go over there, okay? Brandon, I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna go over there. I'm gonna go over there. I want wood, I want lights, and. Then there's like, then there's like. What's up, what's up? Lights? That's not him. Ask him. He's three in time. He's three in time. I'm going open, I'm going open. Try and time. Try and slide, try and slide. Shotzi goes crazy on this hill. And Tiggy, Tiggy, Tiggy. And 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 Tiggy, Tiggy. Out of right, wait. 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 I'm saying mid. I'm trying to stop it. RP2? RP2? Open Brandon. Brandon. Open Brandon. Listen, he's uh, close right. Close right. Open Brandon. Can you watch our pinch? Open Brandon. Nice. I'm already on our bullets there. Dying. Oh, time in the five pinch. I pinch. I pinch. All right, that's so gonna do. That's gonna do it for the listening for uh, Atlanta phase. What did you guys think about Atlanta phases listening? Uh, I think both were great. It was weird, bro. It's just uh, the, the the duality of of the comms. Like they're so. It seems a lot more frantic, but they're obviously the best team in the fucking game. So they know what's going just on. Just to go just back to it's... look at Shotzi. I mean, AKA Sharksy in the chat. <laughs> He's calling him Sharksy. Um, but the, 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 just the, the plays that he was able to make on this hard point. Um, you know, goes to show you that the hill is probably a, a low fugace. You could sit underwater for a really long time, and it, it is laying on the bottom of the pool. I also <laughs> noticed that fa phases. <laughs> I also noticed that phases strat to try and break this is to just blatantly slide into the hill and try and get underwater. Like I don't even hate that either. Which is Absolutely. like if that's their strat, then that should should tell you that this hill is like if that's yeah. their strat. Crazy, that is though. crazy. That is fucking this insane. Is this is the only hill where playing on hybrid would actually benefit you. Like dolphin lot, diving into the water. You can and dolphin dive into the water. Sliding into the water is not as effective because you'll get stuck at the bottom of like the the stairs, like on the lower level of it, before you actually get to the deeper side. But also breaking from this is like you need to go mid and take a side like and i prefer going around and getting the balcony because if you get the balcony and mid the guy that's on the balcony overlook the players that are rushing out of the mid like um bar and then like help them a lot better so i i don't like breaking from p2 how phase was trying to do it yeah. i think it's just it's a death trap and if we go to the end of the game now let phase actually get in this p1 hard point here at the end but optic texas are able to work a good break so i kind of want to break down atlanta phases setup here kind of pick y'all's brain to try and see what went wrong here uh i think the biggest thing is mc goes down first because he's challenging uh he's challenging like hop up and as soon as he dies that kind of opens things up he's not really in a position where he can be traded so it kind of opens up the gap here for optic and then Obviously, Kenny, he jumps the corner, wins a big one-on-one. -on -one. And I also think the gunfight, the big the, the trade over at old is important too. Because if Draza hits his pinch and is able to find one or two, able to find both kills here, uh, I feel like he would have been able to hold like this stairs area of the map and it, they would have made it maybe been able to funnel Optic here. But Optic did a good job finding that pick onto MC and then flooding with numbers onto onto the point. It was uh, good plays out of them. They traded out the guy wide. They were able to pick MC, who was playing by himself, and Atlanta phase set setup. A little wonky there, in my opinion. I thought they might have been able to bring this back. Uh, what do you guys think? Sam, we'll go with you. Uh, it's kind of what we talked about in the Carolina series, actually. The fix to that P1 was exactly what Draz is doing here. Uh, just late playing old, and if he did get this two-piece, then I think this game gets a little bit more hairy for sure, but it's definitely on MC here. Um, he His only help is the guy from Hill, and obviously Chris doesn't want to overcommit to a child from the time, so I think him and MC should have just held a similar angle, maybe the, in the hallway to not even allow them to cross to the balk where mm -hmm. MC is, but I think Zach, um, again, to call back what we were talking about earlier, made a incredible play here. Um, late hitting old to just like kind of open up the map a little bit for them as opposed to like coming through mid and holding pool stairs and stuff like that. Yeah, but it it's really definitely on MC play. dying here. And if he almost got two, if Zach would have got the two piece there, it was a good good trade from Dashy. Um that would have been that would have been a game changer if they killed two over there. But good trade from Optic. They used their numbers well and uh they took advantage of phases set up there. So good plays from them. Atlanta phase they end up falling short here to map one. They go down oh one and then obviously they go on to win the next three. We'll we'll tune into some other clips. Any final thoughts on the Vista Hardpoint guys? Or sorry, the six star hardpoint. Any final thoughts? Nope. No. All right, let's head into to the search. Uh, the search, I don't have much to say other than Shotzi. I mean, the, the routes that he was able to find and the gaps that he was able to just find all map long was uh, was fun to watch. First round, look at what he does. He's already in 20 seconds. He is already on the other side of high rise uh, behind Atlanta face. 
And Shotzi just finds a gap down low. Nobody from Atlanta watching underground. And Shotzi takes advantage of it. Able to find a couple kills here. And now you can already see the players from Atlanta phase. They instantly turn around. And Dash is able to pick up that kill. This quickly turns into a 4v1. Uh, round is over instantly. Good, good route there from Shotzi. Now we move on to the next round. This is the 1-0 round here. This is the round where Shotzi, again, he's able to get pushed up in finesse. Now, I don't know if Abizi didn't know he was there, but he somehow gets out of blue here and is able to stay alive here on the propane and find another first blood. So again, Shotzi finding those gaps, making plays. It's Abizi who ends up going down here to Ant, just catches him slipping. He gets stunned as well, but able to find a kill and dip on uh, it. He actually gets two here too. I was confused because I didn't know if, if FaZe was calling out here, but Simp wasn't even looking towards this direction. I thought he was about to get picked right here. I thought Ant had another one in the bag. Uh, but he ends up playing the kill back window, finds another one on to MC, and then Ant doing what he does, just dipping, diving, finessing, getting out of there. It was a clinical uh, round number two from Shotzi again. So the first couple rounds uh, going to Optic off the plays from Shotzi. Good plays from him. Then we go into the 2-0 round. Uh, this round here was uh, uh, a big team kill coming in from Atlanta phase, but Optic Texas still end up losing this round. This was a 2v4 situation as Kenny finds another one on the map. What do you guys think went wrong here for uh, Atlanta phase? Uh, Chris, we'll, we'll start with you on this one. What do you think happened here for Atlanta? I'm oh, sorry, one more time? Uh, Atlanta, a 2v4 oh, here, a 2v4? Chris. Yeah, it's a 2v4 and they team kill in the beginning of the round. They team kill. Uh, so I thought this was obviously a troll from Optic. If a team is team killing in the beginning of the round, they got to be yeah. winning these rounds, but they end up not winning the round. Kenny also finds a pick on time MC there. Uh, granted, was quickly traded out by Drone. AG just looks like he's red dot chasing out B Street. Yeah, that's He's going ideal. rogue. I'm trying to AG remember just, how the, AG how this just fucking out. took Nate Shot's hand and took the elves into the forest, bro. He just full sprinted out B Street with numbers. Yeah, he didn't give a fuck right there. I don't know where he was going. He just said yeah, fuck. He's it. I want to see how the rest of this round played out because I honestly don't remember this round. <laughs> they're just, they're, I, I'll be honest, I feel like Optics oh. just no teamwork. Yeah, I'm, they're honestly. just honestly flying around. Yeah, the it's map, just no bro. teamwork. Like, they're just by themselves, just running around. There's, there's no teamwork there. I, know, I said there. it. I said it during the watch party, but optics, um, whether it be game plan, vod review, whatever it may have been, like the early round strats for the first like probably five or six rounds of this map were like entirely optic favored. They did a great job getting bloods. I think they had like seven. I want to say had like eight, eight first bloods. Yeah, so and like they, they lost the map. They did their homework. They game plan well, but phases mid round adjustment through <clears> pretty much the whole game was far superior they had multiple 2v4s they played their numbers disadvantages like perfectly granted it is high rise this is like the one map in the game where i think being down numbers isn't a huge deal but um it's kind of the duality of the optic team they i mean if people are going to say they choked this map you should win your number situation 4v2s stuff like that but yeah. um atlanta just kind of broke them down in the mid round for the majority of the map and next round we have this 1v1 from bruce i mean jesus fuck that pistol he fucking shredded great snap from brucey here you can see the readjustment with the Best center in the there. game that pistol's insane that's it's a good it's great shots I and mean, we got to tip the shots and the snap right there from big brucey but crazy crazy shots coming from a pistol um also ant making plays here we got to show this ant somehow stays alive here and is able to find a kill. Look, he gets stuck here aside, and MC sees him. He's tagged up. He throws the smoke at his feet, jumps the wall, and is able to find Chris on this wall before he dies. Just good plays from Ant again, uh, just being a nuisance and, and being an impact on the map. Uh, good plays from him. And things start to collapse a little bit for Optic. Uh, we go into the 2 1 round. This is the. Oh, sorry. I would just show this one. Sorry, not the 2 1 round. We're going into the 4-2 round. This is where Optic's up by a couple rounds here. You're thinking they're on pace to close this one out. Another 2v4 coming in from Atlanta phase. So one of them is quickly traded out. That's going to be AG. Now they're in a 2v4 situation. They know Shotzi's here, so they were able to find Shotzi. But again, it's just those situations where, like, there's no trades coming in from Optic. They just seem so spread out. And it just seems too easy for Atlanta phase. Uh, when you have numbers like that, you can't throw rounds like this. What do you guys think it went wrong? I think There's... AG was trying to get out of a bad situation. Um, I think him going down was just like a product of him yeah, not right. having like, yeah. like he's one shot right here, half health right here. Like he doesn't, I think his death is okay. Um, Ant was also in a pretty tough spot being underground. He had no help. Both of his teammates were in their spawn. So he tried to smoke him or not even smoke himself out, but he right. was just in a shit spot. And then, um, but that, but that's why I feel that, like there's you know. something wrong, Sam. Like the, 
Yeah, don't you, you think it's it don't you think it's weird that there's two guys in the spawn yet Shotzi's pushed out all the way underground and AG's making a play on bomb? Like, what? bro, yeah, I, I'm I think not that's gonna lie. Weird. The, the way I look at this map is just because it's so open in terms of like lanes. Um, as soon as your teammate makes a play, is on their side of the map, like almost in a bad spot, like you just want to go look at him, like find an angle and look at your teammate because somebody's going to try to hunt them down and trade them. Rarely ever are you going to be in a position where a player gets a kill, unless he gets a kill in the building, in the spawn, like in the depths, right? Where he gets a kill over there. He's not going to get insta traded or like angled from somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like number one, the guy that's top, top heli should have like instantly just ran up top heli and looked for like a trade. Like when Pred and Shotzi both engage and the guy in the windows, like, just run out B Street and go, like, help Pred on the bomb site. Like, just go take an angle. Go take a fight. Because more often than not, those players in bad positions on their side of the map that get a kill, they're going to get hunted, like, yeah. instantly. It, it, almost, get it just almost felt like right there, they're just relying on Ant, which is, like, you you can do that. Like, you can live and die by certain plays. But they already had a couple rounds on the board from Ant just making solo plays. Right? Like, like, eventually, you're going to have to adapt and switch things up and, and try and do something together. Because that's just not going to work every single time, especially if they, they start the map off having a couple rounds like that. Yeah. Like, FaZe is going to start looking for that. That's the thing, though. Like, it's not excusable on this map. Like, on a map like Karachi, like, let's say Shotzi gets through their spawn and gets a kill. Okay, like, he's fucked. Like, he's on his own most of the time. But, like, on this map, you could basically see your the entire map from, like, multiple places on the, on, like, the, air, like, on the map. So, like... Just go to your teammate as fast as possible. You're probably going to pick up a trade. Yeah. And then look at the plays here from Simp in the 4-4 round. I mean, he picks up a trade onto one, picks up a trade onto the second, so finds two trades, and now is left in a 1v1 versus AG. It's Simp versus AG. Simp puts some good shots there into AG as well. And he actually ends up trying to chow this as well. Simp definitely trying to square up. Uh, and just to see how this plays out a little bit, Simp actually ends up rotating back towards blue side here. He gets the bomb down here. And AG doesn't see him. And he's able to get out of there. So I was su surprised to see the bomb go down. I thought AG was going to be throwing tabs on there. Like throwing some shimmies there. And just getting that information. But instead he kind of tucks himself and doesn't see Chris on the site. And then Chris dips the fuck up out of there. Uh, and then what happens next I think is just a really good play from Chris. Um, he ends up spotting AG here. He puts some shots down into him. And he just wraps the map. He wraps through blue. He checks the bomb. He knows uh, AG is either going to... Uh, either hop bomb or, uh, you know, try and rush him mid. So he ends up switching his position, wraps around, and Simp finds three on the round. What a round from Simp. A lot of people are going to say that AG played that like a pussy, but to be fair, most people aren't ever going to plant on that A bomb site. So him playing, like, almost like I not disagree. even looking not at it. I disagree. Not a 1v1, Chris. Not a 1v1. Well, no, but the thing is, like, it's just, like, such a risk to plant A because you can almost be seen from everywhere. And on top of that, AG was in those windows. So Simp going to that bomb site was, like, testing his fucking gangster, basically. The, and also, Pred being on top of this box, if he stays here on this round, if he jumps on there and looks towards B, he can pretty much see the B bomb. Or at the very least, maybe even spot Simp going to plant it or running off it if he does plant. So honestly... The fact that Simp planned there, fair play to him. Yeah, Pred could have definitely played it way more aggressive and stuff like that, but I didn't mind the fact that he sat around mm. here because the, 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 the reason it's why I don't like it, Chris. Spot. So this is where I'm kind of at, or where I'm kind of at is uh, with AG, right? Like he gets the info, he knows Simp is underground, and at this point, when Simp disappears, you you know he could be doing a lot of things now. He can either come back and chow from the stairs, or he can wrap and go top middle. Or he can go blue, or he can go underground and flank his spawn, right? He can come up behind him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, him, like, staying here and, like, being stagnant, like, it just... It, you don't know what's going on. You feel like you don't have info. You don't... Like, I would like to see him just push something out. Like, maybe go left and just hit out blue, or turn around, hit underground or something. Like, try and, like, hit something so at least you have some sort of information. Yeah. And now you can just kind of stay in, moving. He he felt kind of it felt like he wasn't really making, wasn't really 1v, doing anything here. In one v ones, in one v ones, like the best places to play are usually around like top propane and like heli, just because you have height. So if a guy like plants one of the sites, like you have a pretty easy like you know route to see where they went. Yeah. Um, to be fair though, Sib did play it like he thought Pred ran. Like look where he's planning. Like he's planning like if Pred is gonna be B side of the map, like almost if Pred chased him. Yeah. So, I mean... Because I mean, he put shots into him, and that's it, probably what Simp expected him to do. Either chase underground or, or just make another play, whether he goes mm -hmm. left and runs through blue or something. Right? You go left and run through blue, you know he didn't come through there, and you know he either flanked him or went to back to B. Like, there's no other play. Like, he'll have the information to, to act accordingly. The play he made, 
It just, there was probably a million things going through his fucking head because he didn't have any mm-hmm. info, you know? Yeah. Um, but any thoughts on that, guys? Anybody on the panel, any, any thoughts on that? Not really, no. I think he just kind of played a reserves. I'm not going to lie. I think it's just he, once, once Simp disappears, the onus is on him to make a play and Pred didn't move. So I think like Simp was operating under the assumption that he's probably either still going to be there or something else i just i don't agree with the way if that he pred, played it pred looks granted it's hindsight if, but if pred looks to his left and kills him everyone's gonna say pred made a great play by like sitting there so like yeah. that's why like it's like arguing about this and saying yeah pred played like a pussy is just so stupid because it's just like it's so pointless. i do want to say i don't think pred played like a pussy there i was just i don't I, think playing I, the initial spot was, was the bad was i think making. the way he played it after the bomb went down was like yeah, i like, like the bomb down like i would just run out the window i don't as fast yeah as i don't mind him sitting the there because playing b post plant is obviously way harder because you could be fucking anywhere checking the bomb but I think, like, after the bomb went down, the way that he played it is, like, kind of where I thought that he was a little reserved in how he went about it. Yeah. That's all. I think, like, playing that spot originally wasn't wasn't bad at all. And then yeah. uh, we go into the last and final round, and again, it's just Optic just getting picked. It it starts with AG. He's by himself in blue. Nobody pushes in blue with him, and Abizi finds the timing. Right? timing. Yeah, it's good timing, but yeah. at the same time, it's like, he, what if FaZe is double-hitting underground here, and they just slide on um, AG, right? Like, so there's no, kinda, they're not in situations where they can trade each other. Go ahead, so AG. So, I kind of... I kind of like the way that phase plays this. So a lot of people, like if you're just, if you don't really know what you're looking at or don't play the game often, um, you won't really notice it. But like in order to cover the blue entrance where a BZ hit, you have to take a very, very wide angle on that blue door. You can't like sit back and play it reserved. And so they had, uh, I don't know who it is, probably Selium watching over Abe, like yeah, covering that angle, backing that player down or taking that fight for him while Abe basically sneaks in and hugs the wall. So like they don't even see Abe get in there at all like yeah because he's not taking a wide enough angle for the fight and it actually plays in their hands so i mean th- that's just really good like micro strategy out of uh phase to make that play yeah and then they end up closing out the map number two and they're able to tie the series up at one so good place from phase there in the s and d then we go to the infamous control round uh this was a round that Optic probably should have won. Uh, won. There's 30 seconds left on the clock. Atlanta Face have no more lives left. They only have four lives left here in the uh, in the second round. Optic with 10, uh, and we'll just hear Alex rewind it back a little bit more, just so you can guys uh, you guys can like watch the build up and everything. But Atlanta Face, they just hold on and get every single hit, uh, kill. And I don't know what happened to Optic here. I don't know what happened or how they ended up throwing well, this away. They jumped off the point. After they jumped off the point. Does. Yeah, we, once, we, once Shotzi dies, which I'm going to go ahead and stop the dumb shit from Chad coming in, him dying there is completely fine. The yeah. way he played that situation was entirely fine. The he's, he's afterwards, when everything. they need half of a fucking tick and they double run off the point to bottom blue is absurd. Yeah, I don't know why they double right Can here. We watch it. I yeah, watch it's, right it. it's because they it's don't right have a trophy and they think they're going to get naded. But there is no world in but which AG point, and Ant yeah. run off the point here. I that agree. is faded as fuck. It, I don't even know if... Uh, Bro, he jumped. Ag jumped off, heli onto the point. I think, and then runs. Actually, in the I don't even know if he was was. Did he jump? No, I he can't. was. He was top. He bro. If you are that worried about getting naded, you need half of a tick. Play both sides of the point. Play the both boxes. Don't yeah. get. Just don't sit on top of each other. And I get double agree. Naded. Uh, what do you guys think about Ant Streak? I don't really hate. I don't. I don't hate the streak. You don't they're hate trying the streak? to win an offense. They're trying to win an offense. I don't hate the streak. Yeah, but everybody's but, bro, challenging. The, the, the round. The round is now, over. Sam. The round. Sam, the round ends challenge? if they just double stack it. Like, I don't, Sam, I heard Sam, Sam, Sam dude, 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 there. he's streaking though. They gotta stay up, man. I mean, look, I mean, when the streak I mean, comes yeah, out, Kenny's challenging Sam's... mid. Ag, uh, to be fair, Ag got fucking sniped. From I, over there. I disagree with the Sam. Like, Sam. they just have such a key opportunity to just like really make Face panic here. And it said they let Face fucking get all the map control, and then suddenly now we're streaking. Bro, I think I think the streak is fine. If they get the kill, there's no respawns, which is the reason that I think the streak came down. If it was like 10-6 or something like that, where they got the kill and they still got respawns, I think it would be different. But mm-hmm. if they get if he gets a kill with the streak, they're guaranteed to be in a number situation for the rest of the round. So yeah. I don't hate the streak. Yeah. Running off of the point when you need half of a tick, probably less. Because you're you're scared of getting double naded is fucking crazy. Just yeah. play yeah, both sides 100%. of the point. Play Sam, on I don't the even box think they were scared barrels. of getting double naded. I think also, they were just and like, just don't also, fucking die. Then why, also, then why else they fucking? Why would they run I think the point, I then? think they were just looking for. I think they were just cracked, just running that's around looking insane. for somebody. They, they, they blacked out. Then they blacked out. Like I don't even think them double hop. I would love to know the comms or if there's anybody from Optic in the chat or JP or something. 
I don't even know. Up. I don't even know if they coordinated. Yo, let's double stack here. Like, I don't even. I think it just happened that they were both on a point. And you were running around. And you were if looking you for don't good, have the presence you know? of mind in a high intensity situation that you need half of a point or half of a tick, and you have kills in an unlosable situation. If you just yeah. put your body on the point, is fucking crazy. Oh, and by the way, bro, somebody said crazy. Luma faded. Octane is right. I completely agree with you. Bro, I agree bro, also, with Sam. I, I agree. Also, they should have stacked the point. A, them being afraid agree. of nades are so relevant because unless they dumbass. Unless they already were pre-cooking and throwing nades at them, by the time they hop the point, if both of them are on it and the nades the actually over. come out, the rounds are over. Even also, if you're worried about playing, getting double double nated, bro, just don't sit on top of each other. Play the box heady on the right side, looking mid, so you have the guys that are <laughs> obviously going to be trying to jump the point to stop you from capping it. Get yeah. a free kill, and then the uh, other guy just played the barrels on the side of the when, point. when Ant streaked, yeah, his teammates should have stayed alive, but Brandon was top propane, and I'm pretty sure when the streak came in, they knew one guy was in blue. That's an ISO'd gunfight. Like... Brandon could have literally jumped off a of propane and literally just went and took the 1v1 of the guy bottom blue. He probably would have killed him for free because he, the guy in bottom blue can't watch both his top and bottom, and he's just, like, panicking, waiting for the streak to come in. So, like, I don't know, there was plenty of plays they could have made um, to win themselves that game yeah, or that round. The ending of this map was fucking insane, too, bro. 1v1 round five. Yeah, it was, a, it was a 3v3 situation here. 3v3. AG uh, gets taken down by BZ. Now it's 3v2, but the problem is there's only 25 seconds left on the clock. Dude, it's I a thought 2v3. Ant was about to do some crazy shit right it here. It looked like he was about to. Six angle. It was a good angle here, bro. He he had a good ang, and uh, he ends up popping up. He finds one, tries to dip out. The, the fact that he was able to stay alive here was, was tippable. He's able to stay up. He goes top. He has great movement here. I think he should have had uh, the problem is he doesn't have, he has to jump on. He doesn't have time. It's, yeah, it's yeah. over. So he had to jump out. Can we, can we back up where was AG in a gunfly was trying to run away? He, just he, he got a kill and was just trying to get yeah, away. He got he a just, kill, was trying uh, to get out. Yeah. He, he, uh, which I don't even know how I got to this situation. How did it get to the, It was a 7v4 for Faith. Faith almost trolled this. It was a 7v4, and I'm like, bro, how do we keep dying? We couldn't get any kills. And I thought Optic was going to do the same thing uh, we did to them. Uh, you can kind of see how it all unfolds, but yeah, no, AG he AG made a good play here because they were down. They they needed somebody yeah, I, to make a play. I, I really like this play, B Street. Here. Yeah, he made this a good one. play. Like he gets pushed up, finds one, and he also gets out of there too, and and gets pushed up mm. underground. They don't know he's here, and then he finds another one on the simp. It's a good play okay. from him. He he salvaged the round, and, and then it's left in a two v three situation. And Ant, uh, it was a good try from Ant. To be fair, it was a good try, but good plays from Phase. They wait for each other. They don't do any stupid shit. And uh, and I do. I also love the pinch there from Draws mid. Him picking up Bruce there is a big play. If he doesn't sure kill Draws, draws it there, I'm pretty sure Draws a sound horn him. He he's think, above him. No, he, he did he sound horn? No, he look look. He doesn't see him. He's above him. Bruce is under. Or, or look. Mm, you're right, Chris. You're right. I think, yeah, I think you heard him by number. You might have heard him stomp. Or, 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 or he might have saw him last second jumping down the ladder. He either oh, saw him last. EQ, bro. He either <laughs> saw him last second jumping down the like right here because he jumps down. Mm. Nah, he didn't. I don't think he saw that. Maybe he might have saw his nah, head or well, something. To, I don't know. to be fair, in this situation, it's probably dead quiet. Like you're letting the two people, oh, alive, all the people alive, like make their plays and cut and talk. So he probably heard him. Dark. Like it's if he doesn't have daddy on. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I agree with you. Good plays coming in from Atlanta Face to close out the control, uh, and then we hop in to the Rio. First thing we're gonna take a look at on the Rio is uh, it's kind of like the midway point of the map. Uh, FaZe had a really good start to the Rio, and I think that's where Optic, you know, they were really in a state where they had to just put, change some hills together and try and bring it back, because they felt, they felt to a pretty big, uh, deficit early on, but they did a good job, like, hanging in there and, and chaining these hills together. It started with the second P2 to Wait, P3. Hold on, but back up, how the fuck do these splits go down? The split? Oh, like, the, uh, the splits right here? Yeah, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is what I wanted to show, so... And hits an inspirational pinch. Yeah, and hits a really good pinch. Now, right here, I, I think what happens here is he's pushing, he's pushing, he's pushing. They, he only gets one guy to flip Lord. here. But it yeah, doesn't... Oh, go ahead, Chris. I was going to say, it's because the, the other people spawned before there was enough pressure to cause a flip. And then once there was enough, cause a, or enough pressure to cause the flip, the final guy spawned out. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Um, and, but and, it, didn't and, and, it didn't matter. It didn't matter anyway because Optic lucky. did flip. They did get the spawns. So and then so there's just kill timings too because Ken spawns out because they're already blocking their side because he's the third person to fucking spawn up. It's actually games games comedy sometimes. Yeah, but but, I, but as I soon think, as they got four dead, I said I was yeah. like, uh oh. Yeah, I I think the pinch from from Ant here is a really good play though. I, 
think it's a, a great player. Yeah, as a sub player, if you're coming off spawn and you see a, a guy push down, you you have that time to to go around and hit this. Uh, you could you could pick up kills and and flip the spawns. It's it's a perfect route. It's perfect. Surprised nobody from Atlanta was watching it. To be fair, surprised nobody was picking up on it that somebody could potentially pinch. I think it's because one of them spawn boxes. It's also one of those things where it's uh, like they yeah. can't just sit there and watch the pinch forever. Eventually, they have to engage. And like since they already got to that white van, like they're just hoping that nobody hits it because they're already so close. Yeah. And so, when you get that bounce spawn with that much time, you're you don't, not worried you about don't, the pinch. Yeah, you don't want to pinch mid either. If it was early enough, you might even think about pinching that. But like pinching through mid, yeah. but there's there's no point right in in that situation. And this is where I, I optic they they're able to change the P two to P three, and then and then that's where like that this is where the map got fucking crazy because then it was back and forth and then we get to the very end of the map here 220 to 213 and master class 180 yeah i mean this is just this was fucking insane from chris this is fucking crazy optic are the ones who get into this hard point first um you know they're the ones playing the kills they're the ones setting up ag goes rogue here able to find one he was going fucking nuts right there when he just ran out of hill and started chasing able to he was able to find one but then he leaves the hill and that's a three piece from Simp. A three. I don't even know how. How did Simp? Bro, get he looks there? like he's keyboarding he on the pinched, kill on him. He pinched. Uh, <laughs> he pinched boxes. He found a timing. Look, he pinched boxes. Nobody's taking a look at when, it. When did he do this? How, how, can I? Can I'm we watching it right now. We just spawn? like uh, I want to uh, see like where what? he spawned and took the route. Oh yeah, yeah. He spawns in the back. He spawns <laughs> all the way in the back, like back court, like back P P two. Going oh, all the way pinching, back there. Pinching this route. They're pinching this is actually like. A, uh, uh, it's like it's such a risk because he's the first guy in line. He's taking that route. Like I don't think it's that it, much of a risk. No, it's not that much of a risk. Yeah, it's a good also, play. He also just like is banking that his teammate, like his teammates, uh, buy him enough time because if not, he gets red. Yeah, I, I thought it was a good play. I feel no, like there you, I mean, you just got to set up just, a new play. Like your team's dead on new. Like you just got to yeah, yeah, set you, something you, up for your spawners. You know, optics on the hill, and uh, you see your teammates. You see your teammates fighting bridge. You have somebody fighting hill. Uh, him pinching left there. Just it, it, the likelihood also of your team going three dead and you yeah. flipping your team is also extremely low. No. It's not, it's you're not, like yeah, he's not gonna, you're not he, gonna flip yeah. in this situation. Yeah. He also gets he also gets really like good timing because like the spawners come in as he's coming up the escalator, so they don't actually get to like run into him in time. He like gets the perfect timing on that pinch. Yeah, and then right here at the at the very end, Atlanta phase, we're able to win the fights over at new. Uh and they were able to close this one out. They also keep pressure on old, which I think was really important as well. Like keeping that keeping that gas pedal down, like keeping them pushed up behind the map. They did end up spawning. Some of the optic players behind them, um, but they they ended up holding on here. It got a little scary for a second though. Trazel wins a fight. The trades come in, and Atlanta phase uh, win. Let me, they, they let me get, get off of this clip on the box because MC spawns behind them, and obviously Ken gets a call out that they're spawning behind them. But I think he's naded. And I don't think he ever has a chance to turn around. Yeah, hey guys. Uh, any final thoughts, Pat? We'll we'll go to you. Any final thoughts here on a uh, Atlanta phase versus optic? Um. I am going to make an early prediction that I don't see Optic beating this team all year long. Not once. Bro, they're going to get one, dude. Nope. I, I, I'm going to stand go, by like, that. they going to go 11-0 against them through the fucking rest of the season? It's, uh, well, it is only, it is. they'll only play two more times, and then if they play They'll only land, play twice right? more? Yeah. Not including events? That sucks. Major three and major... Actually, no. It could be just one more time, no? You're Pat, talking about Pat, like in the qualifiers? Pat, Pat, I'm going to do this. Yeah. Do this. That now, sucks. You, now you owe me $100. I will make you a $100 bet that I Optic will take this month. You do owe me $100. They, they, they only play one more time in the online <laughs> qualifiers, right, Ben? In the next split, they'll play one more time. And then if they match up at LAN, right? So there's two two events yeah. plus champs that they yeah. could play. So, so yeah, so, I mean, like, we only have one guarantee and potential three. So I... I'm confident with that. I think I don't. I actually don't think Optic's going to beat them. I don't think they have the brain power to beat them, and I think Phase is just going to get better. Listen, this is the bet right now because I think Optic will get one. If if it holds, then you don't owe me anything, and if it doesn't, then I you owe me two hundred. Don't owe you anything, so that bet would make no sense for me. No, you do owe but me hundred. But if you from shave your head again, paid. if you shave your head again at champs, I'll do it. You gonna shave your head with me? No, if you shave your head, no, no, and I'll, I'll do, pay you I'll your, do, I'll do your money if, you're asking I'll for. I'll do it if you do it with me. Will you no, no. shave with me? I will pay you the money that you're wanting, and you shave nah, your head. Nah, nah, Power, you power's a hat anyways. You so you do owe him $100. No, no, I'm saying I will pay him the $100 he's wanting. <laughs> no, you owe him $100, Pat. <laughs> nah, he's capping. <laughs> he's capping? He's got no proof of this. 
But back to what I was all saying. This video fucking burp. What are you talking about? <laughs> Bro, Ben, we you literally asked... record all the episodes of this fucking show. Yeah, Tom, Tom, see, this is what I hate. When Ben forgets that we were sitting on the couch at the Optic Texas event, he's like, yo, get me the uh, rainbow uh, uh, IC and then get me the, or the mm -hmm. Dippin' Dots. Yeah, I never expected And then I came back idiot. and he was like, actually, actually, you know what? Get me, go get me a chocolate Dippin' Dots too <laughs> and a bottle of Coke. Yeah, and, I remember that. And, I remember that. Uh, so, guy, long story short, you're only 46 dollars No, no, that, that's, that's <laughs> event expense. $46. That, that's, dollars. Food, that's food we need at events. You still owe me 100 brother. So, I was running bitch. a tab of Dippin' Dots. Bro, I remember when Ben ordered food by himself, didn't even. Even ask yeah, nobody. I did, I like, did, we're ghost ordering? Yeah, yeah. Yo, he silent ghost order. ordered. He ghost yeah. I was silent starving. Order? He pooped up with the uh, food. This motherfucker. I said, bro. Table. We're all talking about We're food. silent ordering? Starving. Nah, he doesn't know. Nah, Ben. Nah, he doesn't know your shit. That's a W play out of me. Shit. That's crazy. Right now, w we're trying to figure out if we're going to Toronto. I mean, I do really want to go to Toronto. We're trying to figure some things out, Ben. We definitely got to get some updates on that this week and see if we can get over there. Um, yeah. Sam, I know you're already going to be there. I will be there no matter what. You'll be there no matter what. So you already oh, be there. What are you doing there? Going to fucking watch Call of Duty. <laughs> Going to the event. Oh, what are you doing there? <laughs> we, to, to, to not, not, Sam, point, Sam Chad, just like, loves Toronto. Yeah, I dude, big Toronto, Toronto fan. It's a, great, it's a great event, to be honest, in a great city. I, I, I honestly think it's the best city we got. I do love Toronto. Every year. <laughs> but I think, Chad, just to be clear, the issue is, like, we, we've talked to Toronto, like, there's potentially some interesting space in the venue, but the issue is, if we go, we can't do the flank on Twitch, like, after the show ends. So we're trying to figure that out. Back to Vision and YouTube, but we can figure that part out. I think it makes sense for us. If not, we, you know, if we want to go, we're gonna have to be outside the venue. To be honest, mm -hmm. yeah, we could always do the same thing we did for Miami. We got spaces. Toronto, I think we'll probably, you know, we have the the phase office. I think Toronto's also got a facility. I think they would. What about yeah, champs? They would, they would let us use. Uh, we have some ideas for champs, but that's an off-stream discussion. Yeah. No, but do the same rules apply though? Like, you yes, can't everything. go live on Twitch at, at the venue. Mm -hmm. Probably. Uh, I would assume so. Yeah, that's an insane rule. I, yeah, I, I, I think it's an insane rule too because the show ends. We're trying to create content. We're trying to pre the next day. I think there's a marketing angle that it's it's mutually beneficial to all parties. So I'm hoping that people come to their senses, understand the argument that we're trying to make, and kind of look on the side of community in order to, you know, uh, get us in there and then create some content around the events. Why is yeah. everybody saying leak? Everyone knows champs is in Dallas. That like that was rumored and leaked a long time ago. It yeah, was, it was. Uh, reported was by Jacob Hill. The, the season even started. Eight years. And I think everybody in this call would agree. We haven't heard anything to the contrary that's that we're not going to Texas. So I would assume, as we're starting to get close to the summer, that announce will be coming soon. Probably likely of us doing it's it in Scum's house area. in Texas. <laughs> Hector's backyard. backyard with a carne asada, bro. That's where champs is gonna be. be carne hard. asada, bro. God <laughs> damn, bro. All right, Ben, win. hit a fucking putt, man. Ben, hit right. your fucking putt. We, we gonna do, predi are we gonna do predictions. I mean, I have predictions. Week. I didn't know if you wanted to do it like in a midweek show or something, but we could do predictions now. We got Carolina, uh, New York, Seattle, now. Optic, Miami, Toronto. Fucking hell. I got Jeez. New York. No predictions. No versus predictions, Carolina, bro. Optic versus Seattle, no and Toronto predictions, versus bro. Miami. We all got New York. No predictions, bro. What the hell going on? Ben, hit your putt. I'm gonna hit the putt, bro. Ben J, hit the fucking putt. I'm sleeping through my alarm. Hit the fucking putt. Hit the fucking putt, dude. Uh, well, hopefully, me... there's an upset. If there's not an upset, we drop that in the comment questions. section. Yeah, we'll do community questions. But if you guys have any other ideas, man, any other brackets that you want us to do, bracket, or, bracket, bro. they we really enjoyed. Uh, they really did enjoy that segment where we were picking through people's primes. Uh, yeah. Obviously, it was a very opinionated thing. A lot well, you of people guys can enjoy breaking down that show, Tom, because I will not be there. Ben's going Which, golfing, bro. Why don't, why don't we just do the same Ohio thing? City and it's gonna be fucking like because last time Chandler showed me what he did, he picked like all the games all the way up. Why don't we just do like all the teams all the way up, like from yeah, like, I want to do like the... teams, guns, maps. I want to save that cool. for I want to save that for a standalone episode because I want to give that the full attention of a conversation. So, just, hey, Ben, like... Ben, I made that decision. Hit the ball. <laughs> You know what I mean? Hit the Let's fucking do it without ball. Ben just to piss him off. Nah, I don't. What's he talking about? What's he talking about? Step up yeah, to the I'm plate. I'm down to do like maps or something on Friday. That'd be fun. Yeah, we should do some. And he sinks the ball. Look at this guy. He's, He's smooth, a liner. He's never beaten Look the at this guy. This guy's smooth, baby. This guy's fucking smooth. Drop a win in the chat. Nah, ben J, that's phenomenal, Ben. That's phenomenal. Tommy, there's a, uh, there's a putter mat that I meant. Well, you and I should talk. There's a putter mat I might want to get that I can add like slope and stuff. I think it's a cool putter mat. It is a little expensive. It's like 250 bucks, but I think I'm just going to pull the sugar and just buy it. Bro, you make that per episode. Just buy the putter mat. You, I, wish, I wish I made it per episode. Yeah. Since Ben's missing it and you're going to have to have a 
camp thing anyway, you'll probably need a pick for me because I'm gonna have to do it on my phone. What picks? Like a picture for the overlay. Oh, like how you did oh, it on like oh, Christmas. Oh, it's oh, been yeah, already yeah, gonna yeah. be gone, so yeah, 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 yeah. No, we'll we'll, we'll figure something out, Slay. There's, we'll there's already one out. on a scene. When I was futzing around with Tommy's Streamlabs, there's already a fucking scene with a picture of you. Tom just gotta unhide it. Oh yeah. Slay, Tommy, you wanna you Tommy wanna see it? it? Look, Slay. Yeah, she's here right now. There you go. Is he slay? Not the envy yeah, yeah. pick, bro. Come on, bro. It's the fucking 2019. Jesus. The envy pick is crazy. That's a good crazy. headshot. That's you a good headshot. I mean? Good fucking pose. That was that was the an lighting. Ind- bro, I will still say this, bro. Whoever oh, CDL hires for picks, it's the crazy. worst shit. They are the yeah. worst shit, bro. Because that was like an envy one. That wasn't a CDL one. But I even got bro, the work there. Because it's because they did. I'll tell you why it is. Oh my god, that's just Chris. Wow, that's insane. Dude, that's the, just uh, Chris on a ringer right there. It's the same shit. Same pick. I think they do headshots in order. This is going to sound so dumb. They don't do headshots, just have general headshots in media. I think they shoot those headshots intentionally so they look good on all the broadcast graphic assets. They don't. But they don't. <laughs> they well, don't. It's, it's, the it's lighting the, is the, terrible. They, they give everyone a shadow through the center yeah. of their yeah, face. But, but I think that's how that's intentional <laughs> to match it. And it looks terrible on a standalone headshot because you can't really use it. Um, all right guys listen man that's gonna do it for us today on the flank man i hope you guys enjoyed the episodes this week um had a lot of fun doing the shows doing the watch parties it was an absolute pleasure but make sure to like comment and subscribe if you're watching on youtube go to anchor.fm slash the flank to check out all the audio sets are on go follow at the flank on twitter gersh doing a phenomenal job running socials per usual Zuma.gg for the merch. Go check out the Zoom Mafia community on Twitter. Uh, any other shout-outs? Go follow Octane. Go follow Bang. Go follow Shout Duarte. out Ben's magnet golf ball. Shout out Ben's yeah, divot in his putting mat. Yeah, Ben's at Aches. Give it on my putting mat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We know about you, bro. Yeah. I told you what to do with those golf clubs, Ben. I told you what to fucking do. You know what I mean? What? That's what I'm talking about. Don't worry about it. Take a drive through my fucking window? Yep. You need to take a, You need to hit a driver next time. No more putts. Hell no. I want you to open up your window and just hit a fucking driver. <laughs> Hell right out the no. fucking window like an animal. But, guys, yeah. that's going to do it for us. Also, huge shout out to Steel Series again. Uh, really looking forward to working with them. So, huge shout out to Steel Series. Everybody show them some love for uh, one more time. But, guys, as always, take care. Brush your hair, and we'll see you guys next time on another episode of The Flank, man. Take it easy. That's what I'm talking about.